Deacon Adan here. Welcome to an episode of Our Hidden History. And to my left, Captain Joel. And to my right, Officer Judge Riel. Officer Lacroix. And we're going to go into uh, history of our people. A history that's been hidden for us for a long time, hidden from us for a long time. Um, we're going to address current events historically, biblically, of course. And it's, uh, I think it's imperative. I think it's important that we bring this information out because there is an attack going on against our brothers and against our, our brothers, and especially in high uh, status in this world, who are being accused of bringing forth misinformation when they are, in fact, bringing forth true information. So we're going to validate the things that have been said by our brother Nick Cannon, uh, Deshaun Jackson. We're going to bring up um, information out the Bible and out of the history books themselves to show and substantiate that what we're saying, what they've said, should not have been, there should have been no apology for it. Okay, everything we're going to bring out in, this, in today's class, today's radio show, is going to be unapologetically biblical. All right? So let's open up with Proverbs 16, verse 18. We're going to start with that. Um, there's a, it seems to be like, I remember a long time ago, back in the, what, the 80s, when you had rappers like KRS-One. Um, I think Deacon Abiel played it, played it last uh, in Fix Your Face episode about rappers, it's all about um, Shem and so forth and how we're the children of Israel. And it wasn't a problem. You had numerous, you had like Desmond Decker, We Are the Israelites. He was bringing out things way, way before that where um, they were talking about with the Israelites and it wasn't an issue. But for some reason, now... In this time, it's like they're, they're, they're nervous, they're getting scared. They're like, oh, man, uh, uh, anti-Semitism. Whatever you say something regarding us being Hebrews or, or Israel, they're shook. So that's only bringing about more attention to the matter. You're not doing damage control. You're, you're causing more damage. So and we're going we're gonna to add to your damage. All right? So read what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18. Pride. Goeth before destruction, uh -huh. and in haughty spirit before a fall. So pride go up before destruction. Now, as you know, I, be, I believe recently we had Pride Month, so I'm going to address all of that today. Also, all that time, all this nonsense you're hearing about anti-Semitism and feminism going on, all of those, believe it or not, tie in together. There's an agenda. There's a secret agenda going on. You got these idiots talk about um, esoteric conspiracy. No, there is no esoteric conspiracy. There's conspiracy. That's it. No, misinterpretation. There's no misinterpretations. It's only, it's, it's, there are conspiracies going on. I'm going to bring them out. We're going to bring them out. Give me Revelation 11, verse 8. Revelation 11 and verse 8 now. Regarding, because most of you who are living here in America don't know that according to the Bible, one of the most powerful nations on the earth right now, a superpower known as America, the United States of America, is recognized and acknowledged in the Bible as Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great, the great city. Read on, read you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, mm -hmm. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Read again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, mm -hmm. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So their dead bodies, their dead bodies is referring to the children of Israel, shall lie in the street of the great city. Shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually, not in actuality, but spiritually called what? Sodom. Sodom, the land of Sodom, go ahead. And Egypt. And Egypt, go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where also the image and message of our Lord was also crucified. So where the dead bodies of Israel would be, spiritually, this place would be also acknowledged as spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Let's get Revelation 14, verse 8. Let's see what this great city is. Let's see what this great city actually is. 14, verse 8, same book. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 8. Uh -huh. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, mm -hmm. is fallen, that great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So Babylon is fallen. The great city is fallen. Because she made all nations drink of the wrath of her fornication. What's her fornication? Her policies, her politics, her religions, her ideologies, her philosophies, and even economic connections. There's evil involved in that as well. And all nations have drunk of her in that, in that form or fashion. Okay? But our people lie in the streets of that great city, spiritually dead. And that great city consists of Sodom and, Go Sodom and Egypt. So now let's get um, Exodus 11, verse 7. 1, verse 7. We're going to go back to Egypt. Now we're going to see the correlation between 
the great city Babylon, which is modern day United States of America, United States of America, and actual Egypt. The book of Exodus, chapter mm -hmm. one, verse seven. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Read again. And the children of Israel were fruitful and uh -huh. increased abundantly uh -huh. and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. So in the land of Egypt, in the land of Egypt, our people, the children of Israel, our people, I'm going to say it again, our people, the children of Israel, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and those who are um, defined under the, under the category of the diaspora, so-called African diaspora, you are the children of Israel, scattered all over the world. And, and we were all in Egypt. We grew mightily. We grew in, num in number. Go ahead. And the land was filled with them. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So a new king represents a new kingdom. A new kingdom rose up. Go ahead. Go ahead. 18th dynasty. Go ahead. Verse 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So we began, we became the majority. We became the majority of people in Egypt. We started off as a minority, and then we eventually became the majority in the land. And Egypt, obviously, they had some kind of census at the time to acknowledge that there was more of us than them. Okay, likewise, we have that today. In America, they have a census where they can determine who's, which population is larger and smaller. Now, they, they even said recently, I think recently that, uh, um, right, Cap, the um, blacks and Hispanics would be the majority um, in 2021, something like that. It's like 2030. They're right. seeing the blacks and the and Hispanics mm -hmm. will be like the majority. So white, and they're saying also, I did a, I did a video a long time ago uh, about how white folks, the Western man is dying. How so-called white um, men, in particular, are not producing as many children. They never were to begin with. That, that whole folklore of white people running around, having sex with all these Negroes and making mixed babies, that's a lie. That's white supremacy. Mestizos are the majority. That's another lie all throughout Central and South America. The mestizos or Spaniard babies and Native American women babies are the majority. That's a lie also. That is a lie. That is a war tactic to keep us in the thought that our enemies or the other nations are more number than us, when the reality is opposite. All right, so read on. Verse 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Dealing wisely goes back to what I was saying before. Let's say that there's more of us than them, when in reality there's more of, us than, there's more of them than us. So deal wisely goes into that. Go ahead. Lest they multiply. Lest they grow more than us, even more than they are now. Go ahead. And it comes to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So they, grow, they outnumber us, and eventually they leave the land. Why, why was that important? Because it, Israel in that land, we were building the most powerful places. We built the capitals, the Valley of Kings, the um, Pyramid of Giza, and so forth. We built, the, um, valley, we built, we built many, many mon monolithic um, structures in Egypt. We were, the, we were their bread and butter to, to an extent. We were the slaves. Likewise, here in America, they don't want us to leave. Go back to Africa. When they say that to us, they're lying. That's a flat-out lie. When they say that to us, that's a flat out lie. All right. So there it is. they said, let's deal wisely with them. We're going to find out what it, what it meant by dealing wisely with us. Go ahead. Verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Read again. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. Taskmasters at this time. Get that scripture about the taskmasters, who they were. The taskmasters were our people. They set our people in high positions of status, high status positions to we our overseers over us, to keep us in that slave mind against each other. All right? Let's get that real quick, who the taskmasters were in this instance. You Egyptians, of course, were the high ranking, but you had our people under them that were set over us. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 14. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them. See that? So... Uh, a lot of our people were, were um, sent as taskmasters over, over, um, over our own people. So go back again. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 1, verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Mm -hmm. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. We built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Go ahead. We're going to read down to... Yeah, keep going, keep going. But the more they afflicted them... But the more hell they gave us... Like, for example, in America, they put cocaine... Crack, drugs, all that in our community, um, to, um, poison the water, put bad food in our neighborhoods, and yet we still grow in number, healthy and strong, despite all the oppositions, whether it be um, um, giving us diseases, Tuskegee Air Experiments, uh -huh. whether it be the drugs, 
whether it be confining us in small projects, they call projects, experiments, all those areas, we still persevere through it all. We still manage to survive and grow in number despite the oppositions. And Deacon, yeah. even with the coronavirus pandemic, um, like I said, if you notice, um, if you look at the numbers, it's a disparity between the other races and black people because they're saying the black people have the virus more than the other races because right. of our underlying health issues. And they're thinking to destroy us through these d- diseases. Mm-hmm. But in actuality, as they lock us down, black people in a time of oppression, we actually start to multiply and procreate more than we did when we have, when, you know, things are going well for right. us. Right, exactly. So the more they afflict us, the more we grow. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, we grow. You try to push interracial with the commercials. Yeah, go outside your map, go outside your people. And we still get together and we still make more of us. Read on. But the more they afflicted them, the more they, they multiplied and grew. Mm-hmm. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And they were telling, damn, we can't kill these dudes. No matter what we do, we can't kill them. We don't watch them. They, they start to increase. They start to increase the pressure. Read on. Verse 13. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. To what? To serve with rigor. So they made our, our slavery harder, worse. Now, let's get an example of Dylan Crafty with us. Let's deal wisely with them. Give me uh, Wikipedia, history of condoms. Somebody say history of condoms. What's, what's that about? I'm going to show you. History of condoms. Wikipedia, real quick. You're going to you're gonna just read... Uh, <laughs> Let me see. I want you to stop at. To be honest, I forgot. I want you. To, let me see. I want you to stop at. Uh, history of condoms. Yeah, jump. Go to uh, history of condoms. Go to ancient world. Go down. We don't gotta read that. Go to ancient world. Matter of fact, no, matter of fact, no, no. Read, read the whole paragraph. Read the whole paragraph. Then we're gonna skip to ancient, uh, ancient world. Go ahead. The history of condoms go back at least several centuries and perhaps beyond. For most of their history, condoms have been used both as a method of birth control and as a protective measure against sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. Condoms have been made from a variety of materials. Prior to the 19th century, chemically treated linen and animal tissues, intestine or bladder, are the best documented varieties. So back they found ancient condoms that were made of animals and so forth, animal skins or whatever, from ancient civilizations. So condoms are nothing new. I think the white man made condoms. No, he didn't. It came from ancient black civilizations before him. Go ahead. That's where you got the idea from. Go ahead. Rubber condoms gained popularity in the mid-19th century. In the early 20th century, major advances were made in manufacturing techniques. Prior to the introduction of the combined oral contraceptive pill. Prior to the pill. Go ahead. Condoms were the most popular birth control method in the Western world. So they were the most popular birth control, birth control method. Now, let's jump down. That's, that's enough. You know that already. Many of us use them. Many of us have used them. Go down to antiquities. Go, it should go to ancient world, I believe. Ancient. It's, it's, it's something about ancient. Yeah, right? Let me see it. Antiquities in the Middle Ages. We're going to stop where it says amulets. It's going to say, stop at amulet or amulets. Go ahead. Antri- antiquity to the Middle Ages for sex. Mm-hmm. Whether condoms were used in ancient civilizations is debated by archaeologists and historians. Mm-hmm. Societies in the ancient civilizations of Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Prefer- in ancient where? Societies where? In ancient where? Of Greece. And no, go I before mean, that. Societies in the ancient civilizations of Egypt. Ancient Egypt. Remember, we read earlier about the great city, spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Keep this in mind. Ancient Egypt. Go ahead. Greece. Greece. And Rome. Rome, which America is an extension of. America is an extension of Rome. I'm going to get into that later on as the series, as the show progresses. I'm going to go into how, tie all that in. America, Rome, Spain. I all saw one place. America is an extension of the Greco-Roman Empire. It's an extension of it. But I'll get to that another time. Go ahead. And Rome preferred small families and are known to have practiced a variety of birth control methods. And read again. What did they do? And Rome preferred small families and are known to have practiced a variety of birth control oh, methods. Oh, so Egypt and Rome preferred small families and what? And are known to have, pre- pre- uh, what did it say? And preferred small families and are known to have practiced a variety of birth control and methods. And known to provide a variety of birth control. Birth control. So Egypt, Greece, and Rome were known for wanting to have small families and controlling birth. Birth control is controlled birth or reproductive rights. Same thing. Pro-choice. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Just, just 
the, the phrasing is, is, you know, it makes it sound more gentle. Oh, like, like, for example, when you think of the word like, of a term like uh, American Abortion League, that don't sound too friendly. That sounds like they're demanding abortion, right? American abortion. That sounds like a villain. Mm-hmm. American Abortion League. You know? But when you go, no, that sounds to me. Let's try something more pleasant like, hmm, planned parenthood. Mm-hmm. Because planned parenthood sounds a lot better than eugenics, doesn't it? Sounds a lot better than that. So the Egyptians, the Greeks and the Romans, which are the same people, um, not the Egyptians, but the Greeks and Romans, same people, and the Egyptians had a thing, a preference for small families and birth control methods. Remember earlier it said the, the, the Israelites are growing mightier than us. There's more of them. We were a prolific race. We were a people who were like jackrabbits. We had sex all the time. All day in the bedroom, all day. That's how Israel was. That's how Israel is. Mm-hmm. That's how we were. Despite up, but despite building pyramids, despite working in the, in the mud pits, whatever, Israel would come home stressed out and lay it down with the wife and make more slaves. That's what we would do. And so now that's becoming a problem. Because remember, they could lie. For a long time, Esau, a so-called white man, was, white man would say, yeah, you guys are minorities. Now it's becoming evident, no, we're not. We never were minorities. The Mosai said, Israel is as the sand of the sea. If you examine the sea, there's more sea than land. So if we are as the sand of the sea, that means, what, 80% of the world is damn near us. And 20% is the rest of you. You know, by number. I'm just giving a, a, a guesstimate. But you get my point. So now, let's go back to Exodus again. And Deacon, we can yeah. call them contracep- contraceptive traps right. in society. Right. You, have, you don't only have birth control. But you have in the 1980s, you have the sterilization mm-hmm. when they were placing that in our waters. Yep. And actually, Jesse Jackson's created an uproar for them putting the sterilization in our water. Right. They did that to Ephraim, mm-hmm. Northern Kingdom. Mm-hmm. They sterilized them in South America. Mm-hmm. So this it goes it goes deeper than rather than contraception. It right. goes to the housing, goes into the food, the water. Right. And going even going before that regarding um, the eugenics program, when you examine the whole Planned Parenthood thing, that stems back to Germany. Margaret saying I got that from Germany because what happened was during World War II, many black veterans or black military men would go out to Germany and they were having sex with a lot of German women. And they have what was called the brown Afro-Germans or brown babies situation. So the Germans said, these, these, these uh, Schwarzers, Negroes, keep banging our women. So what can we do? Ah, I got it. Let's sterilize our women to keep them from bringing forth these Negro babies in, over here. And then what they did was they took those brown babies or Afro-German babies, and they put them up for adoption, those who could pass, and gave them to white families. So you got a bunch of white folks right now walking around Germany talking about, I hate niggas. Meanwhile, they are niggas and don't know it, raised by white families. So that's why when brothers come with this black-only stuff, I laugh at it. It's comical to me. You are idiots. You don't know your history. So when it comes to... um, the eugenics program, it started off with them doing it to their own women because black men over there were making black babies in Germany. And that was a program of sterilization back then that Margaret Singer brought over here to sterilize blacks over here. And they called it the American Abortion League and said, no, change that. That sounds too forceful. Give it a more pleasant name, Planned Parenthood, which is, which is conveniently located in urban, so-called urban communities. Let us deal wisely with them. You understand? We don't want to go back to Exodus now. 13 again. We're going to be to verse, six, we're going to be to verse uh, 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 13. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, mm-hmm. in mortar, and in brick, and in manner of service. All manner in, in of the, service. All, and in all manner of service in the field. In the where? In the field. Sound familiar? In the field. You had the cotton field, the tobacco field, the indigo field, sugarcane field, rice field, rubber field. We had us work hard in the fields, in Egypt as well as in the Americas. That's why I tripped to say earlier, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, nothing new. That's why you go to the back of the dollar bill, what do you see? The all-seeing eye, the pyramid, Washington, D.C., what do you see? The obelisk. What do you see in Rome? The obelisk. What do you see in Central Park? The obelisk. Why are those there? Why is the pyramid in the back of the dollar bill? What is the pyramid to do in America? What is it there for? (laughs) They don't ask these questions. Why is America called an empire state? Why is New York called the empire state? Is America an empire? Yes, it is. It's part of the Roman Empire. That's why they call it. You you look up Google Google Empire State. 
Why is called Empire State? Go, we don't know why it's called Empire State. It just came about. Someone called it that. Yeah, but why? Why is New York referred to as the Empire State? Because it is a state within an empire, which is the extension of Rome, which got its all, which got its, uh, which got its ideologies and so forth from Egypt and all other ancient black civilizations that that predated. That had us in slavery. America is a compilation of every captivity we've been in from the time of Assyria, from Egypt, up until um, Rome, till now. It's the worst of them all. And as, I, and as we progress through the radio show episodes, I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to show you. Um, go to the history of birth control. <coughs> Matter of fact, read, verse, read the verse 16. I skipped something. Read the verse 16. Verse 14. Mm-hmm. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage mm-hmm. in mortar and in brick. And in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Whatever they had us do, they made it hard, rough, difficult for us. No matter what job it was, the most simplest job, make it harder for them. They were trying to stress us, to keep us from, from what? Growing in number. Read on. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra and the name of the other Pua. Black sisters. Go ahead. And he said... When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women. To the Hebrew women, go ahead. And seat them upon the stools. Because back then, women sat on stools. as gravity pulled the baby down. They didn't lay on their back. That's some new stuff. Back then, you got in the stool, you sat on it. Woman pushed, baby come right out. Because the gravity pushes it down. That's, the, that's a true birth. Go ahead. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. If it be a male, listen. If it be a male, kill it. Go ahead. But if it be a daughter. But a woman with the sisters, go ahead. Then she, then she shall live. You can keep them. Why? Because the male is the one that brings the nation. The male is the nation itself. You kill the males, you kill the nation itself. You kill the husband, you kill the, you kill the, the household. The nation, e- Egypt understood this. That's why most of the time you examine, even up until now, most of the attacks done against the black race of people, Hispanics and Native Americans, is done against the males. Imprisoning us emasculating us, giving us vaccinations for all, to give us to, um, targeting um, boys or autism. That's for the boys primarily. Um, uh, what else? Um, gang affiliations, the, um, even in the rap music, so forth. They, they took that, corrupted that also. Okay, using those young men, those rappers, males, to, to in, uh, encourage our young males to do the foolish things. They, it's about the males. Attack the men. Attack the men. Get rid of the men. Once you get rid of the men, women, are gonna fall, women, women will fall apart. They know that. They know the man is the head of the house. A body can't survive without the head. It cannot. To so cut the head off. Get rid of the men, nation's gone. But keep the women. Because if we lay with the women, we'll make more of our own women, of our own people. Egypt understand that, that the nation, nationality comes from the male. Genetically, scientifically, for some of you, you are more your father than your mother. Biblically, which is more important, you are more your, your father than your mother. Your mother carries the seed of your father. Okay? So now, let's get birth, a history of birth control now. Wikipedia again. History of birth control. Let's get that. Um, we're going to stop at uh, Tamar. History of birth control. The history of birth control, also known as contraception and fertility control, refers to the methods or devices that have been historically used to prevent pregnancy. Uh Planning and provision of birth control is called family planning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in cultures, abortion had none of the stigma which it it has today. Oh, wait a minute. Read it again? And sometimes in cultures... Abortion had none of the stigma which it has today. So sometimes in cultures, abortion didn't have the same stigma that it has today, being wrong. In some cultures, it was okay. Go ahead. Making birth control less important. Abortion was in practice a means of birth control. Abortion what? Abortion was in practice a means of birth control. So abortion is is a practice of birth control or population control. Population control, which also goes into the homosexual agenda, because that also allows people to have less children if they're having, if men, men are having sex with men, women with women, especially if you're t- pushing it in the black and brown communities, since we're the majority. Let's push the homosexual agenda in them, because they know that most for the most part, black and brown folks, we do not like homosexuality. It's taboo with us for the most part. 
Now we're, as assimilation grows among our people in these centuries, we're kind of falling with it. Like, like in Jamaica, back in the day, you get killed for that. Now it's like, oh, you're your own mind, you know, whatever. That's, that's their business. But back then, it wasn't like that. So we're slowly being assimilated into a culture of Greco-Rome, Egypt, which heavily, heavily um, embraced homosexuality. Now let's go to the part where it says ancient world. We're going to end that Tamar. Go down. I think it's Mesopotamia. Yeah, right there. Ancient Mesopotamia. Yep, right there. We're going to stop at Tamar. Ancient world. Ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt. Ancient Babylon, Iraq, and Egypt. Ancient Babylon, Mesopotamia, and Egypt again. Remember, we bought condoms before with Egypt. Now birth control with Egypt again. Go ahead. Same thing. Go ahead. Birth control and abortion are well documented in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. Uh huh. Mesopotamian women use stones not to give birth. They use stones not to give birth. You know what them stones went? Up that vag, right out the box. Go ahead. They use small circular stones that they put as deep as possible into their vagina. It's the intrauterine method. Go ahead. The Yerberis, Ebers papyrus from 1550 BC and a Cahun papyrus from 1850 BC have within them some of the earliest documented descriptions of birth control. The use of honey and archaea, acacia. acacia leaves and lint to be placed in a vagina to block sperm. Uh -huh. And another early document implicitly, 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 I think it says, go ahead. Implicitly. Implicitly or implicitly? Implicitly, I can't. Oh, okay, yeah. You know how it goes. Go ahead, go ahead. You try, we try. Yes. Yeah. Referring? Yes. Referring to birth control <laughs> methods in a Cahoon gynecological. Gynecological. Gyne no, gynecological. gynecological uh -huh. Papyrus uh -huh. from about 1850 BC. Uh -huh. It describes various contraceptive pessaries. Pe pessaries. <laughs> it's on. Contraceptive pessaries. Watch this. Including acacia gum. Gum, acacia gum from the acacia leaf. Go ahead. Which re recent research has confirmed to have spermatocidal uh -huh. qualities. It, it means sperm killing qualities. Go ahead. And it's still used in contraceptives, jellies. It's still used in, in jellies today. Go ahead. Other birth control methods mentioned in a papyrus include the application of gummy substances to cover the mouth of the womb. Mm-hmm. A mixture of I.e. the cervix. Go ahead, push up the womb. Go ahead. A mixture of honey and sodium carbonate applied to the inside of the vagina and a pessary made from the cro crocodile dung. Made from what? Crocodile dung. Made they put doo-doo up their badges. That's what Egyptians are doing. To avoid having children. The, called pe the, pessary was, the pessary was made from crocodile dung. Go ahead. Lactation, breastfeeding. Of up to three years was also used for birth control purposes in ancient Egypt. In ancient Egypt. Go ahead. The book of Genesis reference withdrawal. Reference to the book of Genesis references withdrawal. Go ahead. Or coitus interruptus. Uh, coitus interruptus is called pull out. Coitus interruptus is you pull out. We didn't do all that. We said, listen, I don't want no babies. Just pull it out fast and jizz somewhere else. That's what we did. Pull out and go somewhere else. Coit, coit, uh, coitus interruptus. Go ahead. As a method of contraception, when Onan spills his seed, ejaculates, mm -hmm. on the ground so as to not f father a child with his deceased brother's wife, Tamar. Right. So that was a, a, script, a, scriptural explanation, a scriptural example of what another method of birth control was to pull out. Now, this guy was evil as hell. Excuse me. Onan. He, did that, he, he hated his brother, so the Lord put him to death. But that's a scriptural example of what Israel did. Israel would... In that instance, that's a wicked, uh, a negative palm version of it. But Israel didn't believe in that. Israel just lay with the. Israel would have babies upon babies upon babies. That's how we were. You mean scripture about in Psalms, blesses the womb, fruitful, this quiver of them. Israel was. Israel did not care about. We had a bunch of kids. It was a blessing for us, especially male children. Our sisters prided themselves in bringing forth male children. Women too, but. They pride them so they knew that the male would, brought, would, would, would further produce the nation. It's in Psalms. Have this quiver of them. It says quiver of them. Uh, I think it's Psalms 127. Yeah, that should be. That's it. That's it. Uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 3. Uh-huh. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. Children are a heritage of the Lord. That's what we understood that. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And the fruit of the womb, a pregnant womb, is God's reward. Not God's cursing. Not God's mistake. God's reward. Go ahead. 
Verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. Arrows, go ahead. So are children of the youth. So are children in your youth. Go ahead. Happy is the man that have his quiver full of them. Yeah, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. He has a whole bag of arrows or children. Happy is the man that has a bunch of kids. Go ahead. They shall not be ashamed. But wait, they, wait, wait, they shall what? They shall not be ashamed. They shall not be ashamed. Go ahead. But they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So our people pride themselves in producing children. Now we've been, we've been with the enemy for so long. Now when you say, how many kids, you tell somebody, even today in black community, you tell somebody, how many kids you have? Oh, I got five. Mm. You get that response. Ugh, really? Four? Wow. Mm. Mm. It's like it's negative. What's wrong with that? But then you watch these TV shows like Octomom, 28, um, Kate, 20, Kate plus eight. That's cute on TV with white folks do, but on black folks, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know, I can, I don't know how you do it. So it's, this, it's, 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 it's been ingrained in us to be ashamed of having a quiver full of, a ch of children because we have been assimilated into the mindset of having small amount of children like the Egyptians and the Greeks and the Romans. And Babylonians, which America is an extension of both. Spiritually, Egypt, Egypt, and America is the new Babylon. So it's the same characteristics, the same practices being repeated and pushed into our psyche over and over and over again. Now, let's get um, Exodus 117 and 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the midwives feared God. The mid our women, our sisters during this time, <laughs> had a fear of God. Go ahead. Let's see what they did. And did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them. And did not kill our children at birth. He told the midwives, kill the males. They were like, no, that's our brothers. We ain't killing our baby brothers. Go ahead. But saved the men children alive. But kept the men children alive. Did not kill. Go ahead. The babies. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing? And he said, what? What's happening? Why aren't you killing these baby boys? Like I told you. Go ahead. And have saved the men children alive. And they keep being born. What are you doing? Go ahead. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. women our, women are different, our women are different from your women. They're different from your women. Go ahead. For they are lively and are, del and are delivered or the midwives come in unto them. By the time we go, they were basically telling the women, midwives to cause something to happen where the child can't come out the womb, where it dies. Basically telling the midwives to create stillbirths. So they said, by the time we get to the mothers, baby's already out. We can't, we, we can't stop them. The, the babies pop out. They're quick. We, we can't stop it. So, oh, sorry. That was their excuse. Now, you know, this is, this is a very terrifying time because their lives, they put their lives on the line for their people during this time. Go ahead. Verse 20. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. Therefore, God dealt well with the women who did not kill our brothers, our infant family. Our brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And we grew more and more and even stronger than the last generation. Go ahead. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. He gave them status. We, we Israel, built them homes. And, I, and as a thank you for keeping our, bringing our babies alive to us. Because that was the law that was decreed. Go ahead. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river. Every son that is born of y'all you shall throw them into the river. Uh, to the crocodile god was in Sobek. To that god. Throw them to the gate. Throw the babies to the gators. Does that sound familiar? Because I know in Florida, they have a thing called uh, gator bait. Hmm, mm -hmm. Where white folks took our black babies from us as they were born, put them in a, in a freaking net, threw them in a river, swamp, and the alligator would latch on and pull the alligator out and make shoes out of it. So it's nothing new. Spiritually, Egypt. Nothing new under the sun, as Ecclesiastes says. Go ahead. Now you got black people singing gator boots. Right. Gator boots, all that stuff. I got gator boots on. You don't know the history of that stuff. You don't understand it. Go ahead. And every daughter you shall save alive. But you keep the women alive. Strengthen the women. Destroy the men, but strengthen the women. That sounds so familiar today. Destroy the men, but strength to keep the women alive. Hmm. Let's get Wisdom of Solomon 11 verse 6. Wisdom of Psalm 11, verse 6. Solomon spoke about this also. Let's see what he said regarding this. Wisdom of Psalm 11 and verse 6. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 6. Then we're going to read verse 7, then verse 14. 
For instead of a fountain of a perpetual running river, troubled with foul blood, for a manifest reproof of that commandment. So go back again, read it again. For instead of a fountain of a perpetual running river, mm -hmm. troubled with foul blood, for a manifest reproof of that commandment. Right. So what's happening is that the Lord had their, their rivers turned to blood as a reminder of what they did when they threw our babies into the river, into their waters, and the, and the gators ate them. It was filled with blood. So the Lord brought that plague of turning their, their rivers into blood as a reminder of the evil they did towards our babies, throwing them in the rivers. Go ahead. Whereby the infants were slain. Whereby what? The infants were slain. Whereby the infants were slain. Go ahead. Thou gavest unto them abundance of water by a means which they hoped not for. Right. It was a water full of blood. We didn't want that. Go ahead. Verse 14. For whom they rejected with scorn when he was long before thrown out at the casting forth of the infants. This is referring it to Moses. Moses was spared. At the casting forth of the infants, Moses was spared. Because his mother, Jehovah, took him and sent him in a little boat. In the river, and the, and the Pharaoh's daughter took him and raised him as her own. So he was he, he was saved from the casting forth of infants. Go ahead. Him in the end, when they saw what came to pass. So the same man that they scorned and made fun of and mocked as the, um as their deliverer, who was saved at the casting forth of the infants. Go ahead. Him what? Him in the end. Him Moses in the end. Go ahead. When they saw what came to pass. When he became their savior. Go ahead. They admired. They admired Moses. So at the casting forth of infants. Moses was spared. Why? Because they were trying to destroy a Messiah of the people. Because it was historically documented that it was rumored among the Egyptians that a savior would come and save the Egyptians. So they said, you know what? Kill all these males. But Moses, the savior, a black Messiah, a black Messiah or savior was saved and delivered the people. And the same thing happened with Christ with Herod. They killed all the children two years and under. And he was spared. Same thing again and again. He became what? A messiah to the people as well. A black messiah. A revolutionary. A black revolutionary. Okay, now, let's get um, Jeremiah 44, verse 15. Let's fast forward now. So now, Babylon comes up. Ancient Babylon, Mesopotamia, rises up. Israel's afraid, terrified of Nebuchadnezzar, the king. So we decide to flee to Egypt because Israel loved Egypt. We loved Egypt. Because Egypt was powerful back then. But the Mosai rose up another um, Hamite empire to overthrow it. All right, so Jeremiah 44. Let's see what happened to the mindset of the people in Egypt. Remember, that great city earlier in Revelation, Babylon, which is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude. A whole bunch of them. Go ahead. Even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. in Pathros. Upper Egypt. Go ahead. Answered Jeremiah saying. Answered Jeremiah saying what? So it says the men knew that the women, their wives, were burning incense to other gods while in Egypt. This other god will be Isis. Okay. A warrior sex goddess of Egypt who, was, who became Esther, Easter, uh, Astarte, Diana, Wonder Woman, feminism. Same nonsense. Diva. Boss B, Mother Nature, Mother Nature, Gaia, same garbage, Athena, same garbage, Semiramis. Semiramis, same garbage, feminist garbage. Go ahead. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto We're thee. Not, Jeremiah, we're listening to you. We're not listening to nothing you say, Jeremiah. The woman said this to Jeremiah. Go ahead, the prophet. Go ahead. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing going forth out of our own mouth. We're going to do whatever we want to do, Jeremiah. This is the wives speaking to Jeremiah while their men were present. Okay, go ahead. Doing what? To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Unto the queen of heaven. The diva. The goddess. Because you black women swear up and down that you gods. I'm a god. I'm a queen. You know what a queen is? A queen is a wife. And many of our women are not wives. Three out of, out of every three, one is married. And two are not. That's what a queen, a queen is a wife of a king. That's what a queen is. Not some hoe getting a box blown out by a bunch of niggas in the street. That's not a queen. I'm a boss or a bad girl summer. That's nonsense. But America encourages this. America encourages this, this promiscuity, this perversion. It makes it normal. Even during slavery, we had enough sense to say, that's my wife, 
That's my husband. There was none of that running around. That wasn't going on. We got books for now. Bring it out laws on next week. We was in slavery. That was not going on. Baby mama, baby daddy, sugar daddies, girlfriends, girl, boyfriends, girlfriends. That was unheard of with us. Even in the fields in slavery, under the hardest bondage of con in conditions, we had enough sense to say, you know what? Being a hoe, nah, I no. You know who made us hoes? The white men made us hoes. Bed wenches, get in this bed, nigga. They made our women whores. But we did not do that. That's a learned habit. Well, I'll not, I won't say learned, we were doing that before that. I'll say it was, that habit was pretty much enhanced yep. in this time period. Enhanced and made worse. Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. What we did in, e what we did in Jerusalem, we're going to do here in Egypt. Go ahead. For then had we plenty of vit victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. When we worshiped the devil, when we worshiped the female gods, we lived good. We ate good, we lived good, we was good. I'm blessed. I'm saving the blood of the devil. I mean Jesus. Go ahead. Verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven. But since we stopped worshiping other gods. Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. We have wanted all things. We're, we're poor now. We're going through things. We're suffering. Go ahead. And have been consumed by the sword and by, and by the famine. Go ahead. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her. Did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? So he said, so we did these things. Were our men not there? So they agree with us. We're not our men there and we did these things? He's out there asking them a question. So I showed you the men in Egypt. Israel went to Egypt. They started worshiping female goddesses, and the women ran the men. The men stood by, yes, dear, no, dear, yes, you want my penis? Okay, I put it in the shoebox. Here you go, put it, you put it in the vault, and you give it back to me when I'm ready to have it. <laughs> that's what happened. And that's the same with you Negroes today. Up under your woman's skirt, same thing today. Yes, you're a goddess. Yes, you're a queen of the heavens. Yes, you, yes. Madness, man. Madness. Give me um, Judith 10.19. Judith 10.19, part of the Bible. I was removed by the Protestants. It had too much information in it, so they took it out, but it's part of the Bible. The original King James Version had, the Judith, had Judith in it. We're going to read what the heathen said regarding this sister named Judith, all right? And we're going to read what they said. Now, this sister Judith, um, the Lord sent her. There was a, there was a general named uh, Holophanes who was sent to come and spy out the land to, to, to conquer it. So the Lord used Sister Judith, who was bad, she was fine, to pretty much deceive this general and to, have, and to take his head off. But before this took place, we're, we're going to read what they, what they thought about her when they saw her. Watch this, how bad she was. Watch this. The book of Judith, chapter 10, verse 19. Verse, verse 18. Verse 18. Then was there a concourse throughout all the camp. For her coming was noised among the tents. They saw, so she's coming through with her servant. They're like, yo, 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 this girl, this, yo, yo, come on, come on, come in. This girl is bad. All these heathen came around to, you know, you know, you, know, you see a, 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 in the world, you see a girl, yo, 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 girl, yo, you see a girl right there? Oh my God, yo, come here, come in. Look at her, look at her, yo. So the same thing happened in this time. They see Judith walking up and they all run to, they all have a concourse to surround her to see her. Go ahead. And they came about her. As she stood without the tent of Holophanes. Go ahead. Till they told him of her. Go ahead. And they wondered at her beauty. They said, damn, look at her. Oh my gosh, look at this woman. How bad she is. Go ahead. And admired the children of Israel because of her. And they said, these are their women. This, like, this is how Israelite women look? Wow. Go ahead. And everyone said to his neighbor, who would despise this people that have among them such women? How can we hate these people that have such beautiful sisters? Oh my goodness. How can we despise them? Go ahead. Surely it is not good that one man of them be left. We should kill all their men off. Go ahead. Who being let go might deceive the whole earth. Who can use these women to destroy us. Because their women, women, women are too bad. We need to kill off their men. Don't that sound familiar? Don't that sound odd to you like Egypt? Kill the males, alive, keep the women alive, kill the males. Same thing again. Same thing. Let's destroy the men. If we can't kill them physically, let's destroy them mentally. Make them weak. Put the women in front. Make her feel like she runs the house. She runs everything. She's a queen of the earth. She's a god. She's a leader. Let's put them in, for, in the forefront and make the man weak and ostracize him and, 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 and emasculate him. 
And, and let, let's give, give them a, a, a hanging through propaganda, media. Let's do that. Nick Cannon, Deshaun Jackson. Let's hang them for the world to see in front of their women. Let's do that. Destroy them. Give me um, Quintel Pro. I want goals one and two. Quintel Pro, goals one and two. Y'all got to understand, many of you have been lied to in America. You are living here. You telling a white man that black lives matter. I, I'm trying. I'm hoping one day y'all figure out that that has to matter to you first. You you do understand that black lives must matter to black lives first, right? So many of y'all y'all ask y'all think black lives matter when a white man decides it matters. That's why they're gonna keep killing us. And they're, gonna, they're gonna keep killing us again and again until you figure out that black lives must matter to black lives first. Goal number one and number two. Two is the main part I want though. Blow it up. All ones one and two. This is Quintel Pro. These are their goals. Under J. Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover, read his plans, what he had. Can you read that, Cat? Blow it up. You don't need all of that. Just put one and two. Blow it up. There we go. Right there, yep. Number one, prevent the coalition of a militant black nationalist group. So prevent unity of Israelites, pretty much. Black unity groups, they attacked Black Panthers, they attacked all these different black organizations, infiltrated them, SCL, Bishop brought it out yesterday, SCLC, Black Panthers, all these organization, organizations were infiltrated and eventually removed. Go ahead. In unity, there is strength. In, in what? In unity, there is strength. In unity, there is strength. Go ahead. A truism that is no less valid for all its Triteness. Tr triteness. Meaning repetition. Meaning something that's true, that happens, it may not be that important, but it's, it may not be, it's small, but it still shows it's valid and important. Regardless of, what, regardless of how they gather or for what reason, it's still valid to being a problem or a danger. Go ahead. An effective coalition of a black nationalist groups might be the first step toward a real mama. Black, Mau Mau. Go ahead. Mau Mau. Black revolutionary army in America. The beginning of a true black revelation. A revolution. revolution. So it says we cannot allow any unity of any kind, regardless of how small or, or, or like, for example, us, all we do is use the Bible. When the street corners yell with the Bible in our hand. So some, that's small. But to the government, they're like, yo, that's a problem because regardless of what they're doing, they have no guns in their hand, but they're still bringing the people together. That's a triteness that is still involves truism. That's valid. That's dangerous. Number two is what I want, though. Number two, prevent the rise of a messiah. Prevent the rise of a messiah. Go ahead. Who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement? Malcolm X might have been such a messiah. He is the martyr of the movement today. He's dead because they had him killed also. Go ahead. Martin Luther King, Stokely Carmichael, and Elijah Muhammad all inspire this position. Elijah Muhammad is less of a threat because of his age. King could be a very real contender for this position should he abandon his supposed obedience to white liberal doctrine. So they understand that Martin Luther King was following Christianity. Christianity is the obedience to white liberal doctrine. Liberal doctrine. Another liberal doctrine is Black Lives Matter. That's another liberal doctrine that supports obedience to white supremacy. Go ahead. Nonviolence and embrace black nationalism. Carmichael has the necessary charis charisma to be a real threat in this way. He got the way too. So again, this is remove a black messiah. He knows he mentions all black men. He doesn't mention any black females. I'm not saying they weren't in, they weren't in part. They weren't um, play a play a role. They played a role as well. But his focus was the black males. Get rid of the black males. Or any who have any type of charisma or any kind of potential to be a messiah to the people. Even Martin Luther King was alive. and said, listen, Martin Luther King's alive, but he might change his stance. And he did. He said, I, he said um, I feel like I've what? Integrated my people into a, into burn. a burning mm -hmm. house. They said, up, oh, get rid of them. So I'm showing y'all that the black man is the main threat. When a black man stands up, the white man comes behind him and goes, nigga, sit your black ass down. And take this check. Yes, sir, both sides going to do it. But a lot of you brothers are not ready. You're not ready to deal with them on that level. Some of y'all got to, we said earlier in class yesterday, some of y'all need to just fall back and support the, the, the troops in the, in, the, in the front lines. 
Chad, you want to say something? Yes. Um, if you notice the terms, um, J. Edgar Hoover used it's black messiah. Historically speaking, and when you look in, in terms of um, Edomite history or Caucasian history, you don't have any revolutionary figure that rose up as a, black, a potential black messiah mm -hmm. other than the image of Caesar Borgia that they push right. during the Renaissance era. But you notice how during the black activist movement, the black power movement, the 1960s and the 70s, mm -hmm. they said these could be arise as a black messiah. And you make the association between today, during the time of oppression, is similar to the time of Rome. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have black activists that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You had what? You had um, in Acts chapter 5, mm -hmm. that was an activist, an economic activist. Mm -hmm. You had the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. These were all activists Herodians, during the time period. Herodians, the Herodians. Yeah. These mm -hmm. were all Epicureans. activists. Mm -hmm. Epicureans. And Christ was the most revolutionary activist of all times. Mm -hmm. So look at the association. You don't see the Jewish community. community. Name one political activist that you see that spoke out for the masses of the people that's in a history book. You don't see that. Right. You don't see it. All you see in the nation is death and destruction, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. That's it. But on our, our side, you see political, you see activists fighting against oppression, and it correlates to the prophets as well as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Get Revelation 17, verse 1. You're going to read to verse 6. Book of Revelations, chapter 17, verse 1. And there, came, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I will, the great whore that sits upon many waters. Some of y'all have seen, have seen symbolism of this great whore that sits upon waters. She is referred to as the Statue of Liberty with her seven points on her head and her ten toes that are revealed under her gown. There's no coincidence behind those seven horns on top of her head and ten toes that are sticking out under her gown with chains in the bottom. There's no coincidence behind that symbolism. But she is that great, she is the sim symbolism of America, that great whore, Babylon, that sits upon the waters. Go ahead. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. All nations deal with America in some form or fashion, whether it be economically, politically, religiously, whatever. In any spectrum, America has her hands in everything and in every one, in every land. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Go ahead. Go ahead. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. She saw, he saw a woman sit upon a, a scarlet or red Colored beast. Go ahead. Full of names of blasphemy. And this beast had names full of blasphemy. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns. So he saw this woman sitting upon this dragon that had seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Golden cup means she had status and power, and, she, and full of that cup was abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Verse 5, watch this. Who is this, who is this woman? Go ahead. And upon her head, and upon her forehead, was a name written, Mystery. Stop. Why is it called Mystery? Because no one knows who this woman is. This woman represents America, the United States of America. Go ahead. Mystery, Babylon the Great. And no one knows that Babylon the Great is in fact America. Go ahead. The mother of harlots. The mother of harlots. And abominations of the earth. And abominations. I mean, she is the main uplifter of all abominations and filthiness upon the earth. And all nations, for the most part, follow suit. If you do not follow suit, you have embargoes placed on you, sanctions placed on you, or political types of restraints or financial restraints placed upon you. That's what happens when you do not fall in line or you get taken down by her, um, her military and so forth. They take a leader down, put one up that follows their agenda. One way or the other, you're going to fall in line with America. One way or the other. Okay? Ask Africa. They'll tell you. All right? So, um, it says, upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon. Babylon means what? Confusion. <laughs> Confusion. Transgenderism. Confusion. Pansexual, bisexual, trisexual, quatsexual, whatever the hell, all these different numbers. Leprechauns and fairy, fairy dust, all this nonsense, freaking titles, man. Damn confusion. Let's go to um, 
Um, oh, I wrote it down. Regarding Obama, Obama, who is the 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 founder of Obama Nations on Earth. Well, his name it sounds so familiar, it sounds so similar. Obama, Obama Nations. It sounds so similar because the man that's his legacy. This man literally passed laws of abominations on the earth. He legalized abominations. So they said, hmm, the white man was like, hmm, Obama, abominations. Oh, let's, we'll use this one. That name sounds, that name, that, that sounds similar. <laughs> no disrespect to him, but he was, he's, been, he's used. He's been used. If he's watching, brother, you've been used. Your legacy is you took black rights, put them, threw them in the garbage, and gave homosexuals the rights that black folks have been fighting for for years. That's your legacy. Because black folks cannot name one executive order that he passed that benefited black folks. Aside from what? A phone? What did he do? What, fill in the blank. Obama did blank for the black nation. Fill in the blank. He, he was black. That's why a white man says to you, reparations? He was your reparations. There's your reparations right there. A colored president. Congratulations. Bring now, <laughs> shut up, nigga, and dribble. <laughs> Bring an abomination, then bring in the last Trump. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Then you have, of course, after Obama, Obama passed the law, he opened the freaking floodgates. Then, of course, you had the Black Lives Matter movement come in and capitalize off those rights. Okay? And the heavy money that comes behind it was a man by the name of George Soros that is, uh, that is now funding this organization headed by three black sodomitist women, lesbian women, who are, who are against black father, fatherhood households who were raised in father and mother households. You cannot make this up. You can't make it up. One left the house at 16 because her parents disapproved of her being homosexual or whatever. So obviously she must, based upon what I'm reading, have a bitterness towards, towards those who oppose homosexuality because her parents... From what I read, opposed it. I could be wrong, but from what I read, that's what, that's what I read. But you got three lesbian women talking about destroying the patriarchal um, nuclear family. Now, what is more important to a black life than a black father? You need black men to produce black children and brown men. So why would you leave out fathers? Why is that? Le if you care about black lives... Why would you leave out fathers? That's the most important thing. If you read the statistics on black households and our fathers, it's completely detrimental. High, high um, dropout rate, high prison rate, high murder rate, high anger rate. The children are damn near destroyed before they're even born when the father ain't there. But you don't have not a single mention of fathers in your website because y'all are a bunch of damn demons. Black and red demons. Y'all are a bunch of brown strawberries. Chocolate-covered Edomites. Give me um, Leviticus 18.22. I'm going to read some abominations. America, uh, or Babylon the Great, is what? Mother of harlots, abominations. You know what I want. You know, the, the usual. 18.22. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 22. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Why not? It is abomination. It is abomination. And abom not Obama, but that sounds close. It is an abomination. 2013, next chapter. Book of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. And if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They committed a what? An abomination that they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So by law, by God's law, that act of homosexuality is an abomination. It is an abomination. Anything outside of marriage in Leviticus 18 is an abomination. Period. An abomination, period. And America promotes this through executive orders, through politics. They push it, push it, push it. Now, let's get... Um, Ezekiel 16. Let's get some more abominations that America pushes. And it's not being another. Um, black Lives Matter movement is the black hand of white supremacy. The black and brown hand of white supremacy. They cannot use white hands to do it. Let's use their own people so they won't say it's a racist agenda. We'll put the black folks in the forefront, but meanwhile, we're the one pulling the strings. 
It's a Trojan horse. It's a Trojan horse. Uh, thank you. It's a Trojan horse. And y'all keep letting the horse in every few years. You did it in the 60s. You're doing it now. Ezekiel 16, verse 20. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 20. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Yeah. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? Zeke, read again. I'm sorry. I'm not, that might have been there. Hold on a second. Let me get there. Let me get there with you. Let me get there with you. 16 yes, and verse, sir. what was that, 20? Yes, sir. Yeah, read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 20. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters. Moreover, thou hast taken thy son. This is the Lord speaking to Israel, but he's speaking to Israel as a woman. Because the Most High refers to Israel as his wife, as his lover. So he's speaking to Israel in the woman, in the, in the, in the, in the um, terminology, in the term metaphor of a woman or wife. Go ahead. Whom thou hast born unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. So you, I'm sorry, read it one more top of the top. I'm sorry. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast born unto me. Whom you've had for me. Because I gave you, I remember the Lord's earlier in Psalms, blessed are those who have the quiver of them. The Lord blesses us with children. Go ahead. And these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. What does sacrificing sons and daughters translate to, the, to today? Abortions. 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 <laughs> and, believe, and it came out recently in the news that Planned Parenthood is selling the parts mm -hmm. of the babies. And most of those baby parts is black and brown babies. For whatever reason, it's starting to fall what they're doing with them. I don't know, but it definitely has been revealed that the parts are being used or utilized for Deacon, something. We know what they're being used for. Well, these explain. vaccines that they're using to poison us. Right. And right. these diseases. Right. So right. the vaccines, right. all, as well as the diseases that they're administered to the, to the public. Right, because the diseases are made from fetal tissue and, and animal, animal tissue. tissue. And, and the vaccines are made and from fetal vaccines. tissue. Exactly. That's exactly. Yep. what it's selling it to. There you go. The highest bidder. There you go. Read again. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. To be destroyed. Go ahead. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? Is this of your whoredoms, this whoredom that you're doing, is this a small matter? Go ahead. That thou, thou, that thou hast lain my children. No. Read again. That thou hast slain my children. That thou hast slain my children. Is that a small matter to you that you just take a bit? Oh, it's a fetus. A fetus is a two-month-old in a womb. If I kill a two-month-old outside the womb, is it murder? So why would it be murder inside the womb? You know how dumb that sounds? Oh, it's a fetus. It's a fetus. It's a baby. A small baby. Read it again. But when you, when you live among your oppressor, you eventually begin to think like your oppressor. Because remember, during slavery, throwing babies in alligators' mouths wasn't a problem. So now, sucking them out with a vacuum cleaner, ripping them out piece by piece to put them on the table isn't a problem to black folks anymore. Or melting them out with a pill isn't a problem to you anymore because it's pro-choice. Pro-choice means pro-death. Read again. Verse 21. That thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. Read on. Watch this. And in in all thy and in all thy abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare and was polluted in thy blood. So these things were abominations and whoredoms, whoredoms, whoredoms and abominations. These things is an act of abominations. Killing your children is an abomination that is being pushed in America today, which is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Pro-choice, reproductive rights. Birth control, population control, it's all, excuse me, all in the same vein. Um, three more verses, we're going to take a break. Three more verses. 20, verse 20, uh, 23. Verse 23. And it came to pass, after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God. 25. Verse 25. That thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way. And has made thy beauty to be abhorred. You made yourselves ugly. You made yourself, as a woman, you made yourself from beauty, beautiful to ugly by doing these things, by destroying and killing your children. This goes back to you sisters. When you, no matter how fine you are, when you go into that freaking clinic and rip the baby out your belly, you make yourself horrible in the eyes of the Lord. You are ugly in the sight of God and ugly in the sight of a righteous man. Go ahead. And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by. What, they, what does a woman do? What do you do? And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by. You a hoe. Open your legs to every man that passed by. Go ahead. 
and multiply thy hoarder. And multiply your, I mean, you get pregnant and kill babies one behind the other. You get this man, get pregnant, kill a baby. Let this man, get pregnant, kill a baby. That's hoarder in the eyes of God. Dump to verse um, 30. Verse 30. How weak is thy heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. So when you do these things, you do the work of an imperious, whorish woman. What's a imperious woman? Real quick, let me end it on this. Imperious, real quick, imperious, real quick, imperious. What is an imperious woman? Definition of imperious, definition of imperious, real quick. Definition of imperious, I-M-P-E-R-I-O-U-S, real quick, real, real quick. Definition of imperious. I got it here, deep. Look it up, what does it say? Imperious. Uh-huh. Domineering. In a haughty manner. Domineering in a haughty manner. Domineering. A boss. A diva. Go ahead. Dictorial. Dictorial. Bossy. Go ahead. Overbearing. Savage. Bougie. That stupid song. I despise that song. Diva. Bougie. Savage. Go ahead. What else? What else? We got some other bossy. Synonyms. Synonyms. Come on. Bossy. High-handed. High-handed. Tyrannical. Tyrannical. Boss. Run the house. Go ahead. Arrogant. Arrogant. Imperative. Oppressive. Oppressive. Commanding. The black woman. The black woman. <laughs> Go ahead. Author authoritative. Authoritative. Uh-huh. Compulsory. Don't think. Just do things. Flip out. Fight mm -hmm. in the fight. What'd you say, bitch? Ah! <laughs> Compulsive. <laughs> That's y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Don't think. Oh, nigga, what you talk? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Nigga, that's so you, nigga. <laughs> All that clapping y'all be doing for no reason. Giving a hand of applause, round of applause for no reason. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mandatory, required, preemptory, overweening. Uh, I already said tyrannical. That's all I want. That's enough. The, 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 the one word I want to use is the B. That's the main word. I wish I was in there. But I'm not going to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. That's, the, that's what most brothers call them when they act like that. She's a... You know, mm -hmm. but we're going to end it on that. We're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. End it on that for now. We'll be back. Good. It's the story that's ignited fierce passions across the nation as allegations of racism and miscarriage of justice tear apart a small Florida town. Three weeks ago, Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager, was shot down by a white neighborhood watchman who claimed self-defense and has not at this point been arrested. And it's caused a public outcry that spread like wildfire. ABC's Matt Gutman brings us the latest now from Sanford, Florida. This is the face of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, whose death has provoked weeks of demonstrations and massive internet petitions, and tonight, a rally in New York City. Ready to rumble a lion out the jungle Slaves on their high horse now I start to take a tumble What you act and shy for now You think just like your uncle Time to Isaiah 14, 21 You fuck to me and them You stain his name Your blood gon' smith for them We here for them Placing the blame upon your fear of them That's dissonance Cause you never change But claim your innocence is sickening Can't wait to see your race go missing What if I explored the continent like Dora Swiped your land, gave you the boot And danced you to cross the border Presented myself friendly Just so I could get the clues to find your riches then proceeded to give your nation the blues told little bass name is steven he's not a man but a heathen and he must be saved for that reason have you built up my empire like bob used to do it take your life and your wife and sell little nick jr you forget that or would you want some get back if your answer's the latter then black lives matter and you you need to sit back for the ride and lgbtq is not included hate to break your heart kid but this that sweet chin music it's the payback That's right, that's right, y'all. This is the payback. Oh, yeah. Esau, you know what's coming for you. You know what's coming for you now. Hey, listen, the payback. We ain't forgot about y'all, the nations, too, man. Y'all gonna get y'all.
Charles too. I said the payback. Hey, let me start by saying Esau is the damn devil. He gon' beat his swords into plow shells and several for setting the blood of the elect. My radar, it detects your death coming from five flames and heavy metal. Uh, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being force fed with all your lies. I'm sick and tired of seeing the pain in my people's eyes. Now prepare slaughter for your sons and daughters to fulfill the prophecy written by our father, Isaiah 14, chapter. Your pain bring me laughter. And after, I do me your remember. Will be compared to be commander. Who that coming from bars ride with garments full of blood splatter? Christ, full of brightness and glorious apparel. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is he that comes thereafter. Your bastards will see your dwelling and ass died. Your kingdom gon' fall, you're coming down like the landslide. And all the nations that stood by your side gon' have their hands tied with chains and shackles, death and anguish. Lord, fill me up with your anger, visions. I can't wait. Christ, let me at him. This the payback. Oh, that's right, that's right, y'all. This is the man. <laughs> the payback. Oh, yeah. Esau, you know what's coming for you. You know what's coming for you now. And listen, the payback. We ain't forgot about y'all, little nations, too, man. Y'all gonna get y'all's, too. I said, the payback. <laughs> Yo, he gonna bottom my feet like halophonies. Scripts cutting them quick, call it the Judas swing. My father who art in heaven, coming swiftly to recompense all the tell you sent is evident. You hated us since Genesis 25. Stole our history, then whitewashed it with lies. Fast forward 2020, you still act a surprise. A perpetual hatred is equal three and five. You carried us over on slave ships, brainwashed our minds so the name will forget. But don't trip, cause in them chariots we gon' dip. Fire from heaven, purge the leaven, and that's it. A daughter of thunder, these heathens wonder. My brothers in purple bringing this kingdom asunder. Exposing the wickedness of the cunning hunter. Esau, your days have been numbed. Uh, Mississippi come to get it like a slave. Cotton picking, coming back for his vengeance when he fought for his freedom. Like a whip when he beat him to his neck when he need him. Hands up, still shot. Better know it's a plot. X style Malcolm, DM Mark Pesson. X for the caller and they took him out the lesson. Truth still sprang up and it's uncontested. Huh? Prophecy or revelation, huh? heathens ain't ready no. Pay back, pay that, what your fathers owe The slave master cave man, get no way, no Tables finna turn, cause you reap what you sow Black man at the sky, woolly hair, red eyes Know you won't slide by, tell Miss Laura bye-bye Cause the one chosen is the one that you despise The only one ain't pay for his crime We ain't sinners in time, you bout to get The, the payback. payback Oh, that's right, that's right, y'all <laughs> the payback Oh yeah Esau, you know what's coming for you You know what's coming for you now And listen The payback We ain't forgot about y'all and other nations too, man Y'all gonna get y'all's too I said the payback Ha! Hit me! Ah! Which was a nation that neighbored Israel on the other side of the Dead Sea. Ah. However, there is way, way more going on. Here. So, first, here's the backstory. The people of Edom were unique because they had a shared okay. ancestry with Please Israel. Tell me your goal, so they both you belonged to the family of Abraham, who, who, with Sarah, to. had their son Leave Isaac, who, right with his wife Rebecca, had mustard two sons, face. Jacob okay, and Jesus. Now, the book of Genesis Move. told us the story of these two brothers, and to say the very you least, they had a they each later received the name Israel and Edom, which eventually became the name of the 
families that this is coming from them. And these families replayed the same difficult situations in Israel and even had enormous tensions throughout the century, but they still share that family bond. And it's that bond that was betrayed and shattered in the tragic events of Jerusalem's fall to Babylon. So when Israel was invaded and conquered by Babylon, the people of Edom took advantage by plundering other Israelites and then capturing and even killing Israelite refugees. Now in other prophetic books, God tells Israel's neighbors to count the bulls and the fire. And so here, Obadiah does the same thing. The short book has two halves. The first part is a series of accusations against the nations, specifically for their pride and self-exaltation. Literally, as they lived up high in the desert of rock, but also metaphorically, they truly believed they were superior to Israel. And it's that pride that led the Israel to not just stand idly by when Babylon destroyed Jerusalem, but actually to participate in this. And so, God says through Obadiah that Edom will be brought down from their height. As they have done to Israel, so it will be done. Now, right when you think you're going to hear more about how Edom will be this soon, the topic suddenly shifts in verse 15. You hear this, the day of the Lord is near against all nations. Now, why do we all of a sudden shift from Edom now to all nations? So this verse is a hinge piece, and it links the first half of the book to the second half, where Obadiah announces the day of the Lord, but not only for Edom, he widens his focus to include all nations. And Obadiah says that all prideful nations that act like Edom will face God's justice in the same way. They'll fall from their prideful heights in the kind of Now the combination of these two sections, one about Edom, the other about all not a lot of time, we approaching on the last hour Yeah, the Lord's name is a strong tower They on their way out, as long as we seek them early Dismissal is automatic, rocket power Got hung and strangled since Star Spangle have broke the deal Think Kurt Angle, how they cleave and turn hill Since they spilled blood, they taste steel They got the Midas touch, under they hand was gold Brazil Caught us like it was, but you can't see us as no simps Now we the tail and you the head, but we see you bust to slip Love the brush of bubble, fill cups double to this coin flip, yeah, burn to stubble when the bombs hit, yeah, ay, got my brothers to run your shit, it's the Uncle Sam versus the Mega Man, this is all true, filled with fury, then I saw red, and then the arm blue, this shit is me, we rush scenes against the machine, dog. we probably lost focus cause the portrait of you freeing us, push hocus pocus through the corporate and the media, raging waters coming from the orbit, they gon' skydive, see my people rising through the ranks, they gave us neckties, that settles it, we gon' give them all of this, damn, come on, man. Welcome to America where cops put the trigger In Babylon a great ain't a place for a nigga Taught us the hate I own, the hate they prone I rate they tone, your rule is ending about to take your throne It's about that time to reap the seed you've sown That's why your kingdom gotta burn to inherit our own uh, We tried to run to our freedom, they put whips on our backs We take a knee to the flag, they take a knee to our necks We went through quarantine and riots in the same month White inside to turn a peaceful protest to a manhunt George Floyd, when the hundreds of innocent victims Them sadistic heathen bastards, Colin Kaepernick them We been oppressed since they packed us on them boats and shipped them Them curses lifting, we're enlightened, now them roads is shifting Esau Omega, Jacob's Alpha, the ending beginning You don't believe me? Second Edris chapter 6 and 9 The prophets breaking down the scripts that's line upon line Here a little, there a little, they rightly divide Lord's me coming with fire, waiting upon a decree Your judgment like graduation, you done earned your degrees Hey look, that one just tried to run away, the prophets got them Shook. Let's see how many Peter Pans can this captain hook. Conquering the natives as you turn them into Catholics For hitting Africa to take a black and make a Baptist Fled from the city we call home for your pride The spirit of the Pharaoh resides in your demise No matter what you devise or hide All we see is red as fruits of our labor Put chariots in disguise The whirlwind of our guys swooping the loose in the noose We know you took the moon but Bruce this isn't a truce Trust we coming for you and whoever else in cahoots the loot Cause who gon' shoot while your troops pissing they boots And all the nations that took a sip of the grape of America America? Well, that's just fine. You'll be whining and dying. Broken the shivers. I know you hope these niggas is lying. But as it's written, we wouldn't have spoke with it. It's divine. It's a payback. Oh, that's right. That's right.
Oh yeah, this is the the payback. Oh yeah, he's all you know what's coming for you. You know what's coming for you now. And listen, the payback. We ain't forgot about y'all, the nations too, man. Y'all gonna get y'all's too. I said the payback. Ha! Hit me. Ah! All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Uh, we left off with the uh, Imperious. We're going to get that again. I don't, the thought to be lost. Back to Ezekiel 16 and verse 30. We'll go back to that in the definition. Do you, of you want me to read uh, scripture first? Yep, I do. Yes, I do. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 30. So we stopped off talking about how the Lord compared Israel to a woman that's a whore, opens her legs to everybody, and kills her children. And that same mannerism is found in our women today. So the same mannerism the Most High is comparing Israel as a nation to a, whor to, a, to a whorish woman. But he gives you the character of a whorish woman that goes out, sleeps around, has babies, and kill makes babies, kills them. Read verse 30 again. What does he call her? Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 30. Because y'all think that that's strong. That's dependent when y'all do these things. Watch what it says here. How weak is thine heart? God says, how weak is thine heart? Not how strong you are, not how a goddess you are, not a diva, not a boss. He says, that's weak. Your mind is, your heart means your mind. Your mind is weak when you do these things. Go ahead. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God? Seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whor whorish woman. The work of an imperious, whorish woman. What's imperious mean again? The definition of imperious. Uh-huh. Domineering. Domineering. In a haughty manner. In a haughty or proud manner. It goes back to being a diva, a boss, a goddess, a queen, strong, so-called strong, independent. Y'all ain't independent on nothing. Y'all dependent on the white man. That's who y'all dependent on. Y'all not independent at all. Now, for some of you sisters who are well off, who have your own business, businesses, and, and, and you, you know, you had your, your strong, your, you are a, uh, uh, um, a uh, successful business-minded woman. That's one thing. But the arrogant and the haughtiness and the boss, all that, you could do with all of that, without all of that stuff. Because a lot of y'all end up being single and you end up alone and miserable and taking medications. Because you got all this money and power and wealth and status in your job, you got the high-paying job. But you're at 40, 50 years old with no husband and no kids. Now, some of y'all may be happy with that. But I know for the most part, y'all ain't happy with that. You're not. So y'all need to stop front like you are happy with it. All right? So now, let's get um, Revelations 12 and 9. He saw that woman, he saw that woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast. And that same scarlet-colored beast goes back to this beast here. In Revelation 12, Revelation 12, verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, jump V verse 3. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. We read about that, be we read about that beast earlier. We read, about, we read about that beast earlier. Seven heads and ten. It says seven heads and ten horns. Now jump down. It says a red dragon. So we went from being called a beast to being a great red dragon. <laughs> Or scarlet-colored beast. It's the same animal that the woman sat upon. Jump down to verse 9. Let's see what it says. Watch this. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Stop. The great dragon, that same red dragon earlier, was cast. This is, this is um, um, past, then future. How it reigns and rules, then it falls. This is the end of it. Read again. And the great, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why is the dragon called that old serpent? We're going to get that soon. That, that old serpent. Go ahead. Call it call the devil. Called the devil. Called the devil. Go ahead. And Satan. And that great dragon is called Satan. The old serpent, the devil, and Satan. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. Which this has the whole world deceived with what? With their abominations. Her filthiness, who've all drunk in the wrath of her fornication. Her politics, her religions, her philosophies. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. He. So it's telling you, it says he. He. It's dragons, it's a, it's a nation, a man, a nation of men, of people. He was what? 
He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth, meaning he was put down in, uh, um, into captivity. Go ahead. Overthrown. Go ahead. And his angels were cast out with him. And his helper, his assistants, the other nations were cast down with him. But who's the he? Go, um, is referring to Edom, the so-called white man. That's who it's referring to. Great red dragon is Edom. The seven heads and ten horns. It's referring to the European Union. Ten horns is a European Union. All right? The seven heads are the Europeans. You, you, have, you have Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Britain. And out of Britain comes what? America. America. That's the seven. And out of the seventh comes the eighth, which is America. And the ten horns is the EU, the ten common markets, European Union, who Trump is now beefing with, who Trump is now saying is the enemy. All this leading up to what? V verse 9 again. And the great dragon was cast out. That's all I want, was cast out. That's leading up to America falling. Her allies or angels turning against her. That's what's happening now, slowly but surely. So whenever you say something about true Hebrews or Israelites, the white man's like, no, 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 uh-uh. You speeding the time, you speeding up the time. Don't do that. Because back then, 60s, 80s, 70s, you could say true Hebrews, whatever. It wasn't a problem. But now, now it's an issue. Now it's a leak they can't stop. Okay, Nick Cannon, stop him. Oh God. And Deshaun Jackson. Oh, okay, he's quiet. Dwayne Wade, stop him. Oh, all right, okay. All right. Jazz player was his name? Wright was his name? The jazz player, oh, the Utah man. jazz player. He's a I think he's a bench player anyway. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> shoot, Justin Wright, stop him. You understand? It's like it's like it's like a leak. They can't stop. They're trying to plug in the holes and they can't stop because they know the time is up. America is falling apart, man. America is on her last leg. You see what's happening? Look outside. You, it's like a dead. It's a it's like a ghost town. Even when things open, people still ain't coming out. America ain't the same. She's not. You got the other countries laughing at her. America's falling apart. <laughs> China's like, <laughs> they don't care because Trump is burning bridges. Deacon, um, to speak on that, um, the comment that you made about Trump and the European Union falling out. Yeah. Um, There's an article that was posted recently. It say, states, Trump says that the European Union was formed in order to take advantage of the United States. Right. He said, he said, he said, Trump said, the EU is a foe. They're a foe. They don't need them anymore. I do my own thing. I'm a gangster. I don't need my own thing, my own thing. I got black friends. I'm not racist. I have black socks. I have black hats. I love Trump, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love Trump, man. That dude's funny as hell, man. I no friends. And go YOLO, YOLO. That's all it's about. It's being YOLO. <laughs> that dude, just burn, he's just burning bridges, man. Burning bridges. He don't care. He, I'm like, this guy doesn't realize what he's doing. Yeah, this he, is it. You got he, it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 2018, he identified the EU, a major U.S. ally, as ally, one, ally, ally, as one of the country's biggest foe. One of the country's biggest foes. Give me Revelation real quick. I gotta get. It. I gotta get it, man. <laughs> Revelation 17, man. Let me show y'all. We are living in the end times, and y'all are playing games. Revelation 17, verse. 10. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And the other is not yet come. One is is Rome, and the other is not yet come. As I said earlier, America is an extension of Rome. When one is, I mean Rome, and one is not yet to come. Go ahead. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That goes into Britain, a short space. Britain didn't rule that long. Go ahead. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Because remember, there's seven horns on that beast. It says this one that, that is and it is not, because it's an ex there's a eighth beast is an extension of the seventh. And all these go back to Rome. So it's saying, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Go ahead. And is of the seventh. And he comes out of the seventh head. The seventh head is Britain. Go ahead. And go into perdition. And it's to go to be destroyed or cast out into the earth. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. The EU, European Union, go ahead. Which have received no kingdom as yet. 
They don't rule like America does. Go ahead. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They're in alliance with America, so within that certain duration of time, they all have power. They all have power together. Go ahead. These have one mind. They all have they're all in alliance. The alliance. Go ahead. European Union. One mind. Go ahead. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And they did give their power and strength unto the beast. Go ahead. These shall make war with the lamb. These, the ten horns, including America, the, the eighth horn, America, shall make war with the lamb. Who's the lamb? The black messiah to come. That explains why Trump has, I'm going to build the space force. I'm going to build the space force in space. I'm going to do it. I'm going to win. I'm the best. Best president ever. <laughs> that's what he does. I'm going to build the, that's what he's doing. Build the space force. Why? What, 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 for what reason? Because they know what or who is coming. Go ahead. And the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords. And the lamb shall overcome them. For what? For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Go ahead. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth. The, we read that earlier. Where the horse, Revelation 17 verse um, 5 or in verse 1. Read again. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest. So earlier he said to you, John, the waters you saw earlier are what? That the horse sits upon is what? Where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So the horse sits in a place where all nations are all together or a great melting pot. What's that? The United States of America. Go ahead. Verse 16. And the ten horns, the EU, go ahead, which thou sawest upon the beast, that you saw upon the beast, go ahead, these shall hate the whore. They're going to turn against that whore, go ahead. And shall make her desolate. And shall make her desolate, go ahead. And naked. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Nuclear war. World War Three. go ahead. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, meaning turn them against each other. Go ahead. And to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So, again, read on, read on. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest. And the woman which you saw, go ahead, watch this. Is that great city. Is that great city that what? That our dead bodies lied in. That Sodom, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Go ahead. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. She's the most powerful kingdom of all the kingdoms. Who is that? America. America, Babylon the Great, United States of America. Now, let's get Revelation again, 12 and 9. One more time. One more time. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That old serpent. Keep that in mind. That great dragon, that old serpent. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the devil. Go ahead. And Satan. And Satan. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And his angels, or allies, were cast out. Remember, I said earlier, they shall make war with the Lamb, and they sh he shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. They're going to lose. It's a losing battle. And the nations best believe, I tell you, Edom, the red, great red dragon, the so-called Caucasian man, or woman, race, they know this. So the more truth spreads, the more truth comes out the faster the time runs out. So any type of truth of any kind that substantiates this Bible and us being the people of the book, they're going to suppress it. They're going to silence you. They're going to dis discredit you. They're going to uh, uh, this is discredit. What's the four words again? I keep forgetting the four Ds. Discredit, whatever. Discredit, destroy. You know the four Ds. Destroy is the, is the end result. Destroy is the end. Byron Allen said it. Destroy is the end result. All right? So now. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you had verse 12. Mm-hmm. Can we read verse 12? Read verse 12. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the All sea. Right. Go ahead. For the <laughs> devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. And this is what we see it happening right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as our brothers is speaking out the truth, saying we are the true Hebrews, now Esau is coming with a great wrath mm -hmm. on them, threatening their money. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't apologize, this is what's going to happen to yep. you. Yeah, yeah. We don't. Because he knoweth that he have but a short time. There you go again. That's what you were saying. Yep. They know that the time is up. That's it. So now they're coming down with great wrath. So yep. Coming down hard. Yep. So you got to understand, when Trump passed that law, I believe it was earlier this year, 
he passed an executive law that <laughs> declared the so-called the Israelis a race. So you have to ask yourself, why would he need to pass a law that declares them to be a race? Weren't they a race already? That means that they were never, ever a nation. And if you were never a nation, why were you given a state or a land if you weren't a nation before Trump made you one by law? That means they were just a group of people. They're a religious group of people that subscribe to a religion that does not belong to them. And since you guys feel that that statement alone is anti-Semitic, I'm going to pull out your books written by your scholars as early as 1902 to substantiate that you tell on yourselves. You don't messed up now, Edom. Y'all yeah, shouldn't have said nothing, man. You, you done messed up now. You should let Nick Cannon ride uh -huh. last month. That's right. Now he brought you brought the ride. beast. Bring it up. You should let him ride. Genesis 3, verse 1. That old serpent. Genesis 3, verse 1. You know what I want. Why is the great red dragon, that scarlet colored beast. And Dick be saying that a long time. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. I just keep <laughs> saying it. Y'all don't, don't get it. Genesis 3, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read the verse 5. You know what I want. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. There go that serpent. Remember earlier it said that old serpent. So the same spirit that's in the great red dragon today, the serpent today, which is America, Babylon the Great, and all the other heads, is all the serpent also, that spirit resided in the Garden of Eden back then. Watch what he did. Go ahead. And he said unto the woman. That's why I said earlier, it said, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan. You understand? You have a, you have a spiritual devil in the heaven that, that dwells among us, that's around an angel. He's, he's real. But you have a physical incarnation of him too. And some of you have angels, spirits, angel, angelic spirits in heaven. You have physical incarnations of gods on the earth too. That should be the children of Israel, which would be the black and brown, the so-called Hispanic Native American man and woman of all different shades and colors and features all over the world throughout the diaspora. That's who was referring to. Okay, that's we are the, we are the physical um, representation of God. Okay, and where there's every hero, there's a villain. Where there's every protagonist, there's an antagonist. Optimist, pessimist. Read it again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Because as Adam, Adam taught her, we can eat the trees of the fruit of the garden. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, Ye shall not eat of it. God said, Do not eat that. Because Adam told me that, so God told him, that's what he told me. Go ahead. Neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Lest you what? Lest ye die. If we touch it, we die. That's what God told us. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Satan said to the woman, no, who told you that? That's what God told you? That's not true. What? Kill your babies? That's not wrong. Pro-choice. You, you have your own rights. You're, that's your body. Do what you want with your body. What? You want to marry that woman over there? What's wrong with that? Pro-choice. Do what you feel. You think you're a man? Oh, you're a woman, but you think you're a man? Oh, okay, I understand. That's how you feel? That's what you are. Oh, you're a boy? You think you're a girl? Oh, okay, then that's how you feel. All right, no problem. Well, okay, if that's the case, hey, Cap, I'm an old white man. I want old money. Could I have it? That's how I feel today. I feel like an old white man today that used to have ancestors that owned slaves. Can I, can I, can I inherit that money now? Since I feel that way today. I want to be an old white descendant of you. Yeah, yeah. Also some of money, me. too. Yeah, pa I'll pass it to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we're going. We feel, we feel like old people, white people today. Mm -hmm. So did we get like a money? Did that happen? Can you I do wanna, that for us? I want to be a new generation. Can I inherit that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you can't make I this up, privilege. man. privilege. Right. You can't make this up, man. Go ahead. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. So Satan told the woman... The reason why God doesn't want you eating that is because God knows that if you do eat it, you'll be wise. Go ahead. Watch this. And ye should be as gods, knowing good and evil. And ye shall be, I mean, you and Adam, you'll both be, God knows if you, if you eat that, you'll be as gods. You and your husband will be gods. He'll be a god and you'll be a diva. You'll be a boss bee. Hot girl summer. 
You know, you you boshy, bougie. That's that'll be you'll be a god. God don't want that, so he don't want you to eat it. And she's like, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he don't want me to be a god. Yeah. <laughs> and she went and did it. She went and partook in that in that foolishness. It's another topic that's going into idolatry. But she partook in that nonsense. Serving the queen of heaven. Same thing. Idolatry, same thing. I'm gonna worship another god. Same, that's the truth. The fruit's going into the idolatry of the time, at that time, the other nations that were around at the time. Because they were not alone. Adam and Eve were not alone. Other nations are there. The, 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 um, God said, don't go amongst them and learn anything from them. But Eve said, well, but Satan told Eve, but if you, if you do go, God knows if you go and learn that stuff, you'll be a god like Adam's a god. You'll be as gods, you and Adam. When Adam was the god, and Eve was made for him, to serve him, she ain't want that. Can I prove it? Sure I can. Sirach 25, verse 19. So what Satan has done from time immemorial is get to the black woman and convince her that she is either equal or is the man. That's what he has done. That's what Black Lives Matter is doing. That's what feminism is doing. Feminism is white woman problems being made to fit black woman problems. But black men, since the time we were brought over here in slave ships, have never had power over their women. So what power are you looking for, black woman? The white man's putting his foot in our necks in front of you and killing us. So what power do we have? The white man is killing our children in the middle for having toy guns. Killing brothers for having toy guns in a, in, in, a, in a Walmart, whatever. Gunning us down in front of you, like, like Philando Castile. Mm -hmm. So what power do we have over you? What the hell are you talking about? You made middle class, upper class, white woman problems your problems. Feminism infiltrated the abolitionist movement. It infiltrated the civil rights movement. And it infiltrated it now. It's doing, it's now homosexuality, which is the same thing, is infiltrating it now. Feminism is pretty much the Trojan horse for homosexuality and pedophilia. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll remind you. When it comes to homosexuality, some will say, is, well, homosexuality is the same as pedophilia, but they use the same excuses. <clears throat> well, love is love. Okay, pedophiles will say the same thing. Love is love. I was born this way. A pedophile will say, so was I. So where does that leave you? Where does that leave you, homo where does that leave you, you homosexuals? Where does that leave your excuses now? Now you open the floodgates for, not, for men to have sex with underage children. Didn't y'all mess around and y'all go crazy or against, when, when they have like, um, like, Celebrities get caught up in pedophilia. Yo, the media has a field day with them. So when they legalize that thing, y'all done. You opening the door, you crack it a little bit, you letting everything in. You letting everything in. Pedophilia. Then after that, what, happens, what comes next? Bestiality comes next. You can have sex with your dog. You can have sex with your cat. You can have sex with your, with your parakeet. It's not a strange thing because homosexuality not, uh, up until the 90s was down, well, down low. It was because it was considered a mental illness. That's why they had a, a law called "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." You cannot enroll, you cannot enlist in the military if you were if you were homosexual. They thought you were something wrong with you, and there is something wrong with you spiritually, mm -hmm. which translates to mentally or fit, mentally. Same thing. But what happens is homosexuals think, "Yeah, we we're gonna use the black rights that black folks fought and died for. We're gonna step on top of their backs." and use their rights to push our agenda and pretend we care about black lives. Meanwhile, you got young boys, one-year-old, three-year-old being killed in Chicago. Where the hell is Black Lives Matter at? All right. Black folks killing babies in Chicago. Where are you? 2012, they killed Trayvon Martin. We were out there teaching long before that against black-on-black -black crime, long before y'all was even a thought. Then, um, 2020, um, George Floyd. Where were you in between those times? That's eight years. Where were you? Where were you in Atlanta? Little eight-year-old was killed. Little girl. God just, God just turned himself, 19-year-old boy, turned himself in. <laughs> he claims he didn't do it, but he turned himself in. You understand? He was involved in it somehow, but the point is that where is Black Lives Matter when black lives are taking away black lives? Where are you? Why, only, why are you only around when white lives take away black lives? It matters more when white lives do it. 
it, it matters more when white lives take away black lives. I thought it mattered more when black lives take black lives. Well, then you have, you have ignorant Negroes today who are being um, geared and saying things like, stop bringing that up, black on black crime. Uh, whites, there's more whites than blacks. No, there isn't. And whites killing whites is not my problem. Blacks killing blacks is my problem. My problem is my people. I'm my own kid. White folks do what they want to do. That's their issue. I see. We this is why we make our people our problem. You Negroes make everybody your problem. That's your problem. Every you all inclusive. I'm not. We're not. That's why they walk all over y'all. You sit there, let them in, let them into your little rallies and so forth. And they sit there, <coughs> let them into your little um riot riots and so forth. Antifa go into the black community, destroy everything, then go back to their neighborhoods where their stores are open, where there's no graffiti, there's no garbage. The police show up immediately, but they come in your community with you under the guise of BLM, destroy your things, then you complain about you can't find no job because you burned the jobs down, dumbass. Oh, but then you had niggas say things like, well, it's not their business to begin with, but it's still a business. It's still an income. Y'all complain about, oh, black folks aren't getting enough employment, they're not getting enough jobs, but then you justify them burning jobs down to the ground in black communities. They're even burning down little mom and pop stores. What's that for? What are you doing destroying? What does that have to do with George Floyd? Would he want that? Nothing. Why would you destroy mom? A brother was killed, I think, in New Orleans. They tried to rob his pawn shop. They killed him. Right in the street. Tried to rob a pawn shop, a brother's pawn shop. He tried to fight off. They shot him. Old man. On Facebook. So what was, was that for George Floyd too? You niggas make me sick, man. Y'all make me sick. And you, and you got dumb Negroes, even in, in, in the truth, that will sit up there, sit up there and be like, yeah, you know, yeah, we, only we can stop uh, uh, black crime. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't stop your woman's mouth. Yeah, exactly. You can't even do that. Yeah, Deacon, and you see the, the Black Lives Matter movement, it's like, it, like we always talk about. It's the last phase of the women's feminist liberation movement. Right, it's exactly. It's the horse. It's the fourth. It's the fourth phase. Fourth phase. Yes. And it's. I also like to call it the resurrection of Eve. Right. The true spirit of Eve on the earth. Right. What Satan could not accomplish in the garden, while the spirit of God was amongst us, it's what Satan accomplished while the white man was in power after the spirit of God was taken out from us. Because mm -hmm. you see, throughout throughout history. Eve, we've seen the spirit of Eve in Genesis 3 introduce feminism. Right. Ever, ever, ever since that, we got a woman in check. You didn't right. really hear about that. Then you have an implementation during the Egyptian um, time period. We had Sheshput. We have Nefertiti came mm -hmm. in. So you start to see a little bit, you right. know, incorporations of feminism. Mm -hmm. Then even up until when we have rulership over Jerusalem, you know, there was no feminism mm -hmm. going around. No. Solomon, there was no feminism going no. around. Okay, now let's go up now to the Babylonian captivity, mm -hmm. Assyrian captivity. No woman liberation nah, movement. Nah. Persian cap. I mean, the Babylonian captivity. Persia you tried. She, Vashi, Vashi, she tried. Vashi tried. Vashi tried. She failed. But, mm -hmm, but there was a law put in place yep. that every woman to respect their husband mm -hmm. and to give honor in the house. Mm -hmm. They tried with that liberation movement. They failed. Yep. Let's go up to Rome, Greece and Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see a little bit of implementation with the Greek gods, right. Diana. Roman goddesses, right. Roman, but the men still had power. Yep. Women did not have power. Nope. It wasn't until we went completely into slavery, we lost sense of self, nationality, mm -hmm. and the women liberation movement, that's when the spirit of Eve resurrected. Right. What Satan could not accomplish in Genesis 3 right. is what he accomplished in the 1900s. Right. Because once Satan deceived Eve, she got into Adam's head, and it was a wrap. And, and after that, confusion was born. Give me Genesis 3 real quick, 24. I'm going to show you real quick, real quick, real quick. Then we're going to go to Surat 25. The book of Genesis 3, verse 24. Once Adam and Eve were cast out, the confusion took place. They were cast out. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim. Angels, go ahead. And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Right. So, I mean, confusion was, was spread. That's some confusion took place. The way of, the way of the, the knowledge of truth was, was now lost. It was gone. Adam had, Adam had immortality. It was gone. The knowledge he had was, was not gone fully, but it was lost after a while in time. Over time, it got lost and corrupted over time until Moses brought it back. You understand? Well, no one, no one, no one, Moses brought it back. But my point is, is that once they are cast out, 
the, the truth was sealed up eventually, and eventually confusion spread around the earth. It spread and evil increased more, especially even during Abraham's time. It says the generations waxed even worse. The flood came. After that, still got worse. You understand? So now, let's get Surat 25, verse 19. Surat 25, verse 19. The book of Surat, chapter 25, verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Right, go ahead. Let the portion of a sinner some fall you, upon Some of you feminists are mad. Oh, that's the Bible. See, it's chauvinist. It's male chauvinist. But let's read it again. Verse 19 again. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Watch this. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So a sinner deserves the wickedness of a wicked woman. It's referring to a wicked woman. Go ahead. Now jump to verse 24. Verse 24. Of the woman... Came the beginning of sin. Of the woman came the beginning of sin because she was the one that was deceived. Go ahead. And through her, we all died. And through her being deceived, she brought death into the world because she went to Adam. Adam went into the nonsense along with it because Adam knew better. She was deceived. Adam knew better. Went anyway along with her afterwards. He followed her lead. And when he followed her lead, it introduced death into the world. When we follow you women, it brings death into the world. That's what the white man said get rid of all the men out the house. Because when you're, you raise monsters, you examine the statistics, if you agree with that, 70% of the prison population of Negroes in jail is raised by single mothers or grandmothers. Mm -hmm. 70%. So when y'all say I do, battle, I do battle by myself, you are a liar. You do not battle by yourself. You do horrible by yourself. Now, some of you, I'm not going to knock all of you. Some of you, because it's been done in scripture, it's been done. It can be done. It can be done. I'm not going to knock it fully. But when you pride yourself in that, something's wrong. Even my own mother in the world, she said, listen, you go, go to your cousin's house. Because my cousins had both their parents. Said, listen, I can't raise you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm your mother. Your father's gone, so go with your cousins. Even my mom, had no, my mom being in the world, had no sense to know I can't do it alone. Be around your male cousins. Be around them. Because I can't, you know, your brother, you know, I, you know, I can't deal with y'all like that. She had enough sense, but you women today, generation today, is like, I, I don't need no man. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to clap some more. Be clap for no reason. Let I me mean, no damn sense. Retarded. Can it be done? Yes. But is there a high success rate when it, when it happens? No. Read again. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. And through her... Act to her de being deceived, we all die. She brought death into the world. Now, give me wisdom of Psalm 224. How was Satan able to deceive Eve? How? Wh how? Why did he go to Adam? Why did he just go to Adam? Hey, Adam, you could be a god. Adam was already a god. So, so what happened? Wisdom of Psalm 2, verse 24. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Read 23 first. Verse 23. For God created man to be immortal. Adam was immortal. Adam had eternal life in his hands. But he lost it. Listen to his woman. Go ahead. Watch this. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. And made Adam to be an image of his own eternity. Immortal just like him. The Lord himself. Go ahead. Watch this. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. However. Go ahead. Through envy of the devil came. Through, on. Through envy of the devil. What? Came death into the world. Through her, we all die. Go ahead. And they that do it, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Find death. So what envy did Satan introduce? Satan saw envy in who? Eve. Eve wanted to be a god too. I want to be a god like Adam. Remember what Satan said to her? God knows if you eat that, you'll be as gods. Plural. You, you two will be as gods because Eve envied Adam. She wants that position. She wants to be the man too. Equality. Feminism. I want to be equal to Adam. So she introduced, the she introduced the doctrine to Adam that would make her what? Equal to him in knowledge, which she wasn't supposed to have, which they, which they weren't supposed to have. And that caused death into the world. When women try to seek equality with their men, it brings death into the world. That's why I, said, I mentioned earlier that the so-called Western man is dying. White women are they're about their business, their money. They're not just in having no babies. And the white man is not producing them like that. So their race is depleting. Their race of so-called Europeans, whether it be Spain, Greece, France, 
is they they have I think it's in Russia or uh, where's it at? I think it's Australia. They're actually the government's actually giving people money to have children. Money, listen, have more. Cause they're depleting. Cause their mind is money, business. And the black woman's mind is what? Money, business. Not saying you, get, you should have that kind of mindset, but when it supersedes your nation, your God and your brothers, it's a problem. So you, you made the white woman's mind, her agenda, your agenda. The white woman used the black woman's as numbers to push their nonsense. And the white woman, believe it or not, no matter how much nonsense she talks, she still respects her men. That's how Trump got in office. They could have put Hillary, in, Hillary there. Why, they put Hillary? Why come Hillary didn't win? Because white folks, male and female, support their men. But they, they told black, they, they front for you. Yes, yes, sister, you, you equal. You're your own woman. You do what you want to do. Meanwhile, yes, sir, no, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. That's how they are at home. That's why a lot of black men go to them. Because they know. But the black woman has been trained by the same woman that had you as slaves also. Don't respect him. He's a nigger. Don't listen to him. You're a god. You're a goddess. You're, you're a queen of heaven. You're a diva. You're bougie. Meanwhile, she has a husband. She has a happy home. She good. But you... You, you back up a child support, uh, judge, I want a thousand a month because he's not, feeling. that's what you're doing. That's what y'all are doing. So y'all keep on farming on the white woman. You keep on doing that. See how far I get you. It's gotten you nowhere so far. Give me uh, Psalms 83 now. Psalms 83. So I got a lot more to go. So let me just get into it. Psalms 83 verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 83. Verse 1. So, I have not forgotten Black Lives Matter. I have not forgotten George Soros. He is involved in this. He is involved. The Democratic Party is involved. The government is involved in all this nonsense. All this hysteria, the disease, the, the COVID-19, the disease, the, the pandemic. All of this stuff is all conspiracy. It's all, not, not, it's all a tactic to destroy the nation. And in the midst of them implementing this nonsense, it's crippling the nation at the same time. It's helping the rich. The rich is good. But the poor is affecting. They even had a thing on Fox News recently. They said um, um, that in, uh, where is it at? I think Washington State. Washington State. State. They're going to have the white kids stay home and have the black kids go to school. <laughs> well, well, yeah, if y'all don't know what time you're in, if y'all think racism is gone, you are stupid as hell. That was on Fox News. During the, they, they said that the, due to a, a possible up, a spike of the disease, right. let the Negroes go to school, let them die off. And then when they die, then the white kids go after. Huh. That's, that's insane. But y'all like, no, equality, black lives matter, black lives matter. You, some, something wrong with y'all. Read that, Psalms 83, verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies. Lo, God, your enemies. God has enemies. So somebody else say, who's, who's, who's somebody else? We ask you, who's God's enemies? You'll say the devil. No, it says enemies, plural. We're gonna read God's enemies now. Go ahead. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. A tumult or a union, a gathering. Go ahead. And they and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They that hate thee have lifted up the head, meaning they've gained power, authority on the earth. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel. They have taken crafty counsel. Let us deal wisely with them. Same thing. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Against who? Against thy people. Against your people. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are his people called? What are they called? Hidden ones. Because their identity of being his people is hidden from them. Hence the term hidden ones. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And that's how we became what? Hidden ones. Read again. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Crafty counsel. Read again. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Starting with their men. Let's kill the men. Let's destroy the men. Let's imprison the men. Give the men drugs. Give them cocaine. 
create, a, a, create an invisible school to prison pipeline. Let's redline them. Let's blackball them. Keep them from being, from, um, keep them from, from rising to certain status, status in the world. Give them low self-esteem. Give them a white Jesus. Give them religion. Give them politics. And if they have any kind of brains, take them and use them and turn their people against them. Make them smart, but make them smart for us, not for, the, not for their own people. Make them smart for us. Make them work. Make them one of us. When they're, they're really smart, make them one of us. Make them work for us, the smart ones. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Therefore becoming what? Hidden to us, hidden ones. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Read it verse 4 more time. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That our nationality may no longer be in our remembrance and it will be hidden from us. We be the hidden ones. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. Go ahead. That, that they are confederate against they thee. They are confederate against who's the thee? God and his people against thee. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. Edom, the great red dragon. Edom, the red people, the red nation. Edom is number one on the list. The ringleader, the arch nemesis of us, the arch villain, the boss of the game. That's who is number one, Edom. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. Ishmael, the Arabs. Palestinians, that's number two on the list. Go ahead. Of Moab. That's Chinese. And now, the another one, Chinese. These are the new colonizers of Africa, the Chinese. Buying up Africa, putting them in debt and so forth, setting them up. Building in our land, storing our resources over there. Moab is number three on the list. That's bad, too. That's the top tier. Go ahead. And the Hagarines. Africans. Gabal. And Ammon. And Amalek. The and Amalek, you so-called Jew. That's, the, that's you. I call you Namis. Nominals. So-called Jews. Noms. The Noms. Nominals. Go ahead. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. That's all I want. I just want to do with Edom, though. Let's, let's just eat them for now. Edom. We're going to do with Edom right now. Edomites. Number one. The number one nation mentioned in verse six is Edom. Let's go to Genesis 36, verse one to six. Genesis 36, verse one to six. We're going to deal with Edom. I'm going to leave Amalek alone. Amalek is a duke of Edom, but I'm going to deal with Edom as a whole for now. The book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse one. Well, I'm sorry, no, not a whole, a sect of them. Go ahead. Now, these are the generations of Esau. Who is Edom? Who is so, so Edom? Esau became Edom, which means red. That's his color. Go ahead. Now, he's that same great, he's that scholar color beast in Revelation. He's that great red dragon in Revelation. Go ahead. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And Aholabah, Aholabamah, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion. The Hivite. Mm -hmm. And Bashamoth, Ishmael's daughter. He married an Arab. He married Ishmael's daughter. He married into the Arab nation also. Go ahead. It's a lot of, a lot of some Ishmael. It's Edom also mingled together. Go ahead. Like a lot of the Turks over there in Egypt. That's Greek or Roman babies over there. Edom Greek. That's Edom Arabs over there. Or Arab Edomites over there. Go ahead. Sister of Nabajoth. Nabayoth. Now, let's, so now somebody else say, well, well, those are black people. How Esau married black women and have black and white babies? It's, it happens. There's many examples of it. You have the sister from um, Jamie Foxx show, the Haitian sister, Beauvoir, what's her name? Garcelle. Garcelle Beauvoir. Look at, look at her kids. There's a variety of them. You have Edomites lay with black women and have white kids, and you have instances where you have black men lay with white women and have white kids, but they're still black. So don't come with that nonsense, oh, how are they going to be black? It's, it's possible. We got the books that point out that the so-called Romans or Italians all Edomites. They all look white. They're all white folk. So don't even try that nonsense. So let's jump down to verse 8, the 9. Verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. If you forgot, you got it again. Esau is, another name for Esau is Edom. Verse 9, watch this. Verse 9. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites. In Mount Seir. In where? In Mount Seir. And these are the generations of Esau or Edom, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Now, let's get Max Kellerman. I don't know who this guy is or who he thinks he is 
Or who told him that his that him needing an apology multiple times matters? Deshaun, if you're listening, I'm telling you, bro, do not apologize no more. Nick Cannon, do not apologize anymore to these people. They've been lying. They're lying to you. And, and um, Boyce Rock has made a point. He said these guys are accusing these guys of anti-Semitism, but haven't proven that they're wrong. Mm-hmm. They haven't said how they're wrong. They're just saying anti-Semites. How? Can you explain how they're anti-Semitic? How? <coughs> they're just saying, they're not saying or proving how they're, how, if they're wrong or not. They, they didn't say the, the, the Negroes are not Hebrews. They didn't say that. They have not. Let's think about it. Have they said one nope. time who we are? If we're nope. not Hebrews, who are we then? They won't say they it. They said bad information. They say he's just mis- misinformation, bad information. Okay, so what's the true information? What's the right information? Because they know what he's saying is true. They don't want us to know. Crafty counsel. Cut them off from being a nation. Ostracize them. Emasculate them. Give them a propaganda, a propagandish crucifying on the media. Hang them for the world to see. Cut their balls off and hold them in the air for everybody to see. See what happens? You, see what happens? When you talk about us, see what happens? That's what they're doing. But not to the Israelites, not to us. No, no, no. We're going to start at what, 154, right? 156, D. And stop where? 248. All right, so keep that in mind. 156 to 248? Yes, sir. All right. This guy, who is this guy? A, 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 a Villa Ice's cousin? Who is he? Unmute it, brothers. Muted. said that echoing kind of what Deshaun Jackson said, this idea that he can't, he, he said the Jews essentially control the media or he was playing upon that theme. And that's an old anti-Semitic trope. Stop, stop. And the Jews do control the media. This guy is such a piece, he's an, a, liar. a liar, man. They can't stop. They, they just can't, they can't, give me that scripture, man. Psalms, they can't help themselves. They just can't. It's like, it's, like, it's, like nat- it's like nature to them. This lie. You can go on Google and find that you can information Google out. Google who runs Fox News. You can Google who runs CNN. Viacom. Viacom. These are Jewish families that run the, me- they run the media. The they run the banks. record labels, the banks. The Hollywood entertainment industry. They own the roads. What the hell are you talking about? This is a guy that's talking to another black man that does not know anything. These white guys, they pick special Negroes. Or magic Negroes who are friendly and kind in their presence around them, that bow to their BS. This guy cannot cannot stand to us at all. These so-called rabbis or Jewish teachers can never nominal these nominals, these nommies, these nominals can never ever raise a hand to us in a in a verbal conversation regarding history of the Jews ever. And that's why it has to be a his, uh, a media blackout, right? To black out our voice, right? Ice Cube say something, anti-Semitism. But I, Ice Cube don't care. That dude's set for life. He, he don't say what he wants to say. All praise to the Lord. Nick Cannon, that man is worth $60 million. He's still yet to realize he does not need these stations. He can buy property. He can live very well. Very well, but he is not thinking outside of, of his... Of his I, I can't explain it. He can't, he's not thinking outside of the box. He's like, oh, I, if, I don't, if I lose the show, Masked Singer, oh, what will I do? You, you're worth $60 million. Nick, you know what it is, though? Like the bishop said? Maybe, maybe there is something. The mic, the mic, the mic. Oh. Yeah, maybe they have something against him. Maybe, or something that, on him. I don't know. I don't, right. I'm not going to put that. I'm not going to say. I don't, I'm not going to speak on things I don't know. But if they do, he better figure it out. Because at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's like they can just come behind us and silence us whenever they want. It's insane. But go ahead. Play the video. Wait, wait, Deacon. Just, yeah. to, just so we could, like I said, go back on that. Um, he's saying that um, this, um, what is this? The media? Anti, this he said anti, um, anti-Semitic trope. Anti-Semitic trope. trope. That Jews run the media. Just show real quick. Show facts. To right. Max Wizard. Max, Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman. You hear that, Max? Now we're going to your sources, your Google, your internet to show you that you are a liar. Yeah, minimal Max. Go minimal to minded Max. Lying Max. Go to that list of Jewish American business people in the media. Like we stupid or something. Wait, 
Hey, Deke, we also got the scripture for you, too. Okay, thank you. What right, you got? Go down. Let me read it now. You read it now. We'll go to Psalms afterwards. We're going to read that after this. Yes, sir. Prove that they're lying. You got it? You gonna go read down. It? Oh, go down. List of Jewish American. Be the top. List of, list of Jewish American business people. Go to where it says television, film, and video. Music industry. Music industry. That's still media. Damn. <laughs> publishing, yeah. newspapers, publishing. That's go media slow. also. Go slow, go slow. Newspaper is publishing, is media too. Um, see some television, of the film, and video. Go slowly. Jeez, man. Hmm. Lloyd Braun, owner of Warlock Industries, former chairman of the ABC Entertainment Group. Oh. Alan and Braverman. Senior EVP, Secretary and General Counsel of the Walt Disney Company. Let's see. And Warner Brothers. News Corp. Oh, Barry Diller, Media Executive, Chairman of IAC Interactive Corp., former CEO, CEO of Paramount Pictures and Fox Incorporated. Oh, Fox. Mm -hmm. Paramount Pictures. Oh, NBC News, Ruvon Frank, Canadian-born broadcast executive, former president of NBC News. One of, oh, man, NBC <laughs> News. It's media. <laughs> Fred W. Friendly, former president of CBS News. <sighs> Jeff Gaspin, former chairman of NBC Universal Television Entertainment. Alan Jerry, founder of cable, cable Vision Industries. Wow. <laughs> founder? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, William Goetz, co-founder of 12th, 20th Century Pictures, later 20th Century Fox. Hey, you also have the, uh, the, um, the Edomite that Bishop mentioned yesterday. Was it Rupert? Rupert Murdoch. Mm -hmm. Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. These are all movie productions. You got, you got uh, Village Road Show Pictures. You got AMC. <laughs> You got Blumhouse, that's the horror <laughs> movies, Jason Blum, Blumhouse. You know I mean, come on, come on, man. You, you brothers gotta stop letting these white folks just talk nonsense in your ears, man. You gotta stop just letting, letting them just talk your ear off of nonsense. Go to Psalms now, please. Enough. Jeez, enough. The book of Psalms, chapter 58, verse 3. Just lie, man. <laughs> the wicked are estranged from the womb. They are estranged from the womb. Go ahead. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. Born natural, born liars, man. This means men, this, this, this lie, this born lying. As soon as they're born, wah, he's lying. He ain't really crying at all. <laughs> this liars, man, this lie all the time. All you have to do, Nick Cannon, Deshaun, is pick up, go online and look these things up. Continue. Play the video. Play the video, come on. Come on. Start the video. Fresh. It froze? And he said during the explanation for why he was talking about it that the, the, the Ashkenazi Jews, meaning white Jews, the people, when people think about who's Jewish in this country, that's who he's referring to, are not the real Jews. So anything he says about them can't be anti-Semitic because the, the Semitic people are African Americans, in fact. First of all, that is conflating um, religious mythology with anthropology and then going back to a religious text to try to piece it all together. That actually indicates that, in fact, Nick Cannon is susceptible to low-quality information. In that's all I want. So uh, apparently Nick, Nick Cannon is saying that we're the true Hebrews. He is subject to what? Low quality, Low quality information. information. So let's bring high quality information today. Bring it out. Give me a Jewish encyclopedia. Jewish. Which volume? Volume four, please. The blue book. All right. Jewish encyclopedia. Bring it out. Volume four. 1902 edition. We're going to get pages one, two, and three. Out of... Your books. Because y'all keep playing with us. And we ain't playing with you. 
they can't keep saying, leave us alone. <laughs> you either gonna have to kill us or imprison us, man. But we're gonna teach in jail too. So you might you better off doing it first. He said, uh, that isn't the one. First page, page one, it says Khazars. Ashkenazis, the core of the Ashkenazi Jews comes out of the Khazars. All right. I did a video way back called Edom, the rise and fall of an empire. Deshaun, Nick, whoever's watching, celebrity, if you're watching, I suggest you reference them to that video. It's called Edom, the rise and fall of an empire. And I go into the books, and I mention them by name. I saw I mentioned the books here because I mentioned them by name in the video. And this book here is called the Jewish Encyclopedia, the 1902 edition, and it talks about Khazar. So now, it says Khazar. This is the glossary here. Khazar. Go over to the next one. Next page. Khazars. Keep that in mind. Khazars. Jump over. Next page. Next page. I'm not reading all, I'm not reading all of that. I ain't got much time. Blow it up some. Let's see what it says right here on top. Go, to, go, up, go up some. It says embrace Judaism. You see that? Khazars embrace Judaism. Now give it out one cap, please. Yep. Page three now. And we're going to read about a Jew, a real Jew, not you, uh, I'll call you that later on, not you nominals, you nominal Jews or Israelis, this is a real Jew by the name of Ibn, by the name of um, Hasdai Ibn Shipra. He was a, 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 say a consultant for a sultan of, of the Umayyad Empire. The Umayyad Empire was the empire of Arabs with the help of the Jews or Moors helped overthrow Spain. Okay, so he was a consultant under that dynasty. All right, so he's so he so he had questions in regards to the business relationships that the Muslims had with this particular empire known as the Khazarian Empire or the Khazars themselves, who resided in the Caucasus Mountains of South Georgia, Russia. Okay, so I said earlier, Khazars embrace Judaism. What I have penciled in, you're gonna read that from the top to the bottom. Page three, Khazars. Hasdai Ibn Shepherd. Hasdai Ibn Shepherd was a Jew that had questions. To, he had questions that he wanted to ask the king of the Khazars regarding regarding them, their um their background. Okay, go ahead. Who was foreign minister to Abd al Rahman? Abd al Rahman. Go ahead, um, Arab um Sultan. Go ahead. Sultan of Cordova. Right. But that's it's, Spain, correct? Yeah, that's Spain. Yes. That's when they conquered Spain by South this time. Spain. By this time. Spain was ruled by the Moors and the, uh, under the Muslim regime, which would be Arabs and Israelites, primarily Israelites and Arabs. Right. Go ahead. In his letter to King Joseph of the Khazars about 960 AD. And 968. So his letter, his letter to King Joseph of the Khazars. King Joseph. Go ahead. Relates that the first information about the, that kingdom was communicated to him by envoys from Khazan. From Karazon, because you had other nations that had business that, that had business relations with the Khazars, so he is getting information from secondhand information from other nations that dealt with them on the business level. He was trying to ask, he was, he was asking them, where are the Khazars from? Who are they? Go ahead. And that their statements were cor corroborated. I'm sorry, because by this time you had three major powers. You had the Christian Empire, Byzantine Empire. You had the caliphs, the Muslim empire, and you had the Khazars. The Khazars were neutral. They weren't, they weren't into Christianity or Muslims. So they were a power. They were an empire. They were powerful as well. So they were neutral. So he was trying to basically win them over and get their background and so forth and get some, gain, gain some kind of alliance with them to overthrow the Christians. Go ahead. And that their statements were corroborated by the ambassadors from Byzantine. From the, Byzantium. From the, so by, by the Byzantium. Go ahead. The, later so the things he heard from other nations... The Roman Empire, um, he got that from them also. Go ahead. The latter told him that the powerful Khazars were maintaining amicable relations with the Byzantine Empire. Right. They were in alliance with the Christians. Go ahead. Christian Rome. Go ahead. With which they carried on by sea a trade in fish, skins, and other wares. Uh-huh. The voyage from Constantinople occupied 15 days. Uh-huh. Let's jump now. Jump to the other part I want. Move up. Yep, right there. Taking a keen interest in everything relating to the kingdom of the Khazars, Hasdai begs the king to communicate to him a detailed account of the geography of his country. Uh huh. Of its internal constitution. Uh huh. Of the customs and occupations of its inhabitants. Uh huh. And especially of the history of his ancestry. Uh, in of his what? 
of his ancestry. Of his ancestry. Go ahead. And of the state. Of the state's ancestry, the people. Go ahead. And this letter has not speaks of the tradition according to which the Khazars once dwelt near the Sierra Sariah Mountains. Dwelt near where? The Sierra Sariah Mountains. The Sierra Mountains. They dwelt near the... Who was in the Sierra Mountains? Dum, dum, dum. Edomites were in the Sierra Mountains. Genesis 36, verse 6. Stop playing with us, man. That's in your books. You lying bastards. That's in your books. Keep our name out your mouth. Don't talk that stuff about anti-Semitic. We are Semitic. Y'all are too. You just Edomites. Read it again, please. If I'm where, I want this. Read it one more time. It just mm-hmm. sounds good to me. It sounds good in my... It melts in my soul. Read Chin it music. again. Marinate. Mm-hmm. Let, Let it marinate. The butter... Uh, d- 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 says, Let the butter <laughs> marinate. On that biscuit. On the biscuit. Read mm-hmm. it again. And this letter has thy speaks of the tradition according to that to which the Khazars once dwelt near the Sierra Mountains. The Sierra Mountains. Go ahead. Read on to the, the ends. That's where it ends? Mountains? Mm-hmm. All right. That's all I wanted. So then what Esau did was he says, oh, uh, but Joseph wrote a letter back to Hasdai saying that they're from Japheth. But the Jewish scholars say that letter is not authentic. There's no evidence supporting it. So that letter was thrown in the garbage. But the letter of the letter regarding Shepard asking them, hey, I heard you guys from tradition come from the Sierra Mountains. That's genuine. That's where, y'all, that's where the Khazars originally came from. When the 12 tribes of Israel were overthrown during the Assyrian and Babylonian captivity, the Edomites migrated further into Europe and began to take over and conquer the Japhetic people out of the land and began to assume, like they always do, began to assume the identity of those they conquer. They conquered the Jews, now they're Jews. They conquered the Christians, which were Jews, now they're Christians. They conquer, then they conquered the, um, the uh, Egyptians out there, now they're Egyptians. They're everybody. They're Indi- five, five-dollar Indians. You know, most of the, or whenever they conquer somebody, they become them. Look at their movies. Gods of Egypt, Gerald Butler, Last Nigga on Earth, Tom Hanks. <laughs> right. The Mexican, Brad Pitt. You don't see a, you don't see a problem with this. They're everybody. The Last Samurai. The Last mm-hmm. Samurai. Tom Cruise. <laughs> the Last of the Mohicans. The Last of the Mohicans. What was his name? Oh, I don't know. That is. Oh, <laughs> oh, I think that's the actual Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God. No, 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 no. That's Esau play them. Was it? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Esau, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll play. Okay. I don't know, I don't know his name, but him too. It never ends. Whoever they conquer, they become. So, the Khazars initially resided, according to tradition, according to Hasdai's research. From the Byzantines, from other nations that dealt with them business-wise, they said, you, 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 I heard you come from the Khazar Mountains, um, from the Sierra Mountains, which is true. This is in your encyclopedia. Yours. So I was going to use off the coast. They'll say off the coast is a conspiracy. Okay, so I'm going to use your encyclopedia. Is that conspiracy too? Oh, let's continue. Let's get the Jewish next book. No, I want volume two. Mm-hmm. Kevin no, 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 no. I want pictorial. Kevin Costner? Yeah. What was that? Uh, Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. Kevin Costner. You see this? Yeah. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs> Kevin Costner, the bodyguard, is a Mohican now. They're, they're everybody except the devil. <laughs> I told you. Damn, man. The damn devil the power speaker. So let's get, let's get the other book, Pictorial. I want that one. Yes, sir. Pictorial. Pictorial. Y'all make this easy when y'all talk. You should stop talking more. And, sh- and yeah, just stop talking. Shut up more and speak less. Give me an image. Anti. It doesn't even matter. You got the book. Okay, you already spoiled it. I don't want the book to see. But put, blow it up. That's the book. Mm-hmm. Pictorial History of Israel. That's such a put the book up. But it's all right. Blow it up. They can't see it. They can't see it? No. Okay, sweet. That's the book. I already said it. Two pages. <laughs> Go to the next page. I already said the book. Go to the next page. I don't think you can see it. it Mess me up, man. Go to the page that I want. Let's see what it has. Load up some, load up some. This is in a book, again, created by Jewish people. Unto thy seed is the topic. Go on down. To the, the, go down to the picture. All owns the picture. Right there. <coughs> What's that say, Captain Joel? Please read for me. Let's see who was on the walls of Egypt. Who are these people here? Perhaps it's Egyptians there. Read that. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt. Oh, who's, who's bondage in Egypt? Depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt. Depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt? But look look at the look at the loincloths. Those are clearly white. 
But the skin is in such a high contrast to the white. It's so black. And he called Ice Cube anti-Semitic for posting these pictures. Right. And, he, and somehow Ice Cube is anti-Semitic when this is in your books. Read again. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in a Theban tomb in Rechmer, governor and vizier at the time of Tutmos III, about 1450 BCE. Go up. Go over the next one. What does the next part say? And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. We just read that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go back down. No, no, no. He's reading the bottom. Right there. Go ahead. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. In mortar and in brick, uh-huh. and in all manner of service in the field. Mm-hmm. So they have they had this in their books of black people, children of Israel in Egypt. Clearly black, D. clearly black, black. You can't deny the blackness there. You can't even lie to us. You can't yeah. even lie. Even in black like. and white, they're black. <laughs> it's not even in color, and they're black. <laughs> and we and guess what? The, that picture we I have it in color. So don't play games. I'll I'll make it worse. We'll make it worse. Keep your mouth quiet. Stop talking. Don't mention us again. Talk about sports, Max. Yes. Yeah, Max. Stay out of your lane. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Stay in your your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane. Talk about basketball. Yeah, and rap music and Eminem. Talk about them. Leave the books to us. (laughs) Get it on next book. Volume next book I want. 450. Page 450. You know what I want. Yes, sir. Next encyclopedia. Written by... uh, you nominals. It's not fun to cause. I'm gonna say nominals from now on. Those of y'all know what that word means, look it up. Nominal. I'm gonna look it up later. We can all read it together and smile. Mm-hmm. Nominal. You want the book? Uh, the cover. Nah, no cover. I want the cover. I know I know what I want. I want page 450. You know what I want? 451? 450. Okay, 450. I had the pencil while yes, I sir. Page 450. Uh-huh. In the 11th century, under Muslim rule. Conditions for the Jews were generally good, but there were times of persecution. The Almohad Arabs in the 12th century prohibited the practice of Judaism in Morocco. In where? In Morocco. In Morocco. In Morocco. So the Almohad was the empire of, of, uh, is of um, Muslims, okay, primarily our people that pretty much ref- um, um, told the Jews in that area to stop observing Judaism. It was outlawed by Islamic law. Go ahead. And forcible conversions to Islam occurred. And forcible conversions to Islam against the Jews were, 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 um, occurred in that time. This is what, what century is that? 11th century? That's 10 hundreds, that's 10 hundreds A.D. Mm-hmm. Now, go down. Well, that's it. A number of groups that throughout... A number of groups throughout Africa claim historical links with Jews. Read, go, 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 go. I want to see it. I want to see it. Come on. Come on. Right there. Let's go. Read it again. A number of groups throughout Africa claim historical links with the Jews. Uh huh. The most feasible claim is that of the better Israel of Ethiopia. Watch this. Recognized by the Israeli government. Recognized as, by who? As the, by the Israeli government. So y'all recognize these these Negroes <laughs> as Jews of Ethiopia. Go ahead. In 1975. Uh huh. And many were airlifted to Israel. In 84, under Operation Moses. Go ahead. The Israeli Sephardi. Chief rabbi decided they were descendants of the ten lost tribes. Uh, so he decided, without any factual evidence, oh, these must be guys, these guys are uh, ten tribes. The lost why is the ten tribes? Because if they say that they're, they're the three, then that would make it be weird. The three tribes are white, but the ten are black. So they say that the ten tribes intermingled so much, they turned into black people. But the main three, Judah, Southern Kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they stayed white. Really? Go ahead. Probably from the tribe of Dan. Probably <laughs> from the tribe of Dan. Remember, they got the prophets. Remember, them being in the land, they got to fit the Bible. The Bible says all twelve tribes will be put back in the land. So all you have is three. So they said, "Well, we got to do something." Okay, let's bring some. Let's bring some blacks in here because the truth starts spreading now. Let's bring some dark uh, people and say that they're Dan. Yeah, they're Dan. Then we're gonna say the East Indians people over here. They're Manasseh. I think we stupid or something. Now, some of those Ethiopians and that you shipped over there are Israelites, yes. But they, damn, they ain't no damn Dan. Watch. Sh- read on. Watch this. Shabba Dan. Reinforced by many centuries of rabbinical responsa that discuss the issues. But historical and DNA evidence suggest different but origins. historical and DNA evidence suggest they're not Dan. 
because they themselves proclaim that they're descendants of <laughs> Nehemiah and Ezra. They, because remember, in Nehemiah and Ezra, it says that Israel resided in the provinces of the, of the king from Ethiopia to India. So they claim that the Ethiopian Jews say, no, we're not Dan. We are descendants of, Le of Ezra and Nehemiah, of Levi and Judah. Mm -hmm. And historical and DNA evidence substantiates the same. But to save face, the white man says, no, they're Dan. With no evidence. Just white man says it, it got to be true, right? No, it's not. On to the next one. Oh, and by the way, speaking of anti-Semitism, are they not killing and beating these Ethiopians over there and calling them cushy, cushy, nigga, nigga? It's that anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't it bringing is. that up. Y'all beating their behinds over there right now. Calling them nigga, all of that. Spitting their face, beating them, throwing them in jail, killing them. Is that not anti-Semitism? That's Dan, right? Oh, stop yeah, playing with us. Yes. They're also sterilizing their women over there. Yeah, too. and sterilizing, yeah, sterilizing women also. Go to um in Mali. Joseph, I'm good. Go to Mali. Page 451. In Mali, several thousand people in Timbuktu claim some form of Jewish ancestry. Moors and Jews. Moors and Jews, which is the same. Go ahead. Fleeing persecution in Spain. During persecution in Spain, that's when um, e um, the white men started taking over Spain. It's called the Reconquista. It started taking back Spain from the, from the Moors. Go ahead. Migrated south in the 14th century to Timbuktu. They fled back out of Spain, back into Africa. Go ahead. Part of the Songhai, Songhai Empire. Part of the Songhai Empire. Go ahead. Among them was the Kihath Kiti family who founded the three villages that still exist near Timbuktu. So you had Jewish families that founded the empires that exist there in Timbuktu. Go ahead. Askaya Muhammad came to power in 1492 and forced Jews to convert to Islam or leave. Right, or get sold into slavery. That's your trans-Saharan slave trade, which they, in which they eventually sold us to the Portuguese, and that translated to the trans-Atlantic slave trade. Because 1492, by that time, the Moors had lost their power mm -hmm. and fled back into Africa and ran to the Arabs and got sold by the Arabs to the Portuguese again and was sold into the Americas. That's his, that's his in their books. Next paragraph, Nigeria. Now, my question is, were there Negroes sold in slavery from Ethiopia? Yes. Were Negroes sold in slavery from Mali? Yes. Go ahead. In Nigeria, the Igbo, Igbo, may be descended from the southern and western migrations of ancient Semitic peoples. Go ahead. And later Jewish Because peoples. Igbo is Eber. Eber is Hebrews. Like the canon said, we are the true Hebrews. Right. Or Igbos, you lying bastards. Read again. In Nigeria, the Igbo may be descended from the southern and western migrations of ancient Semitic peoples. And later Jewish peoples from the Middle Tribe of God. Middle East. Middle East. Go ahead. Sorry. From the Middle East into, into West, West Africa. Africa. Yes, go ahead. There are three groups. Benai Gat. Benai Gat. Ben Gad. Sons of Gad. Said to have descended from tribe of God. Gad, because Gad is there also. Remnants of Gad is there. The eighth son of Jacob. Benai Zebulon. Benai, but sons of Zebulon is there too. Remnants of us is there too. Remnants of us are there too. From the tribe of Zebulon. The fifth son of Jacob. And Benai Manasseh. Benai Benash. Manash is Manasseh. Remnants of them are there too. But I eat from. But not eat from. Go ahead. Are different from other Nigerian Jewish groups Why? as they live among the Yoruba. Because the Yoruba goes back to Jeroboam, the name Jeroboam, the king of Northern Kingdom. Yoruba's is Jeroboam, or Ben I eat from resides there. All right. So now let's get. Uh, were Negroes sold out of Nigeria? Yes. Were Ebos involved in the slave? Were involved in being sold in the slave trade? Yes. Go down. Skip down. Not Abadia. Go to in Somalia. In Somalia, the Yabir, or Hebrew. Or Ebo, Yabir, Ebo, same thing. Tribe is looked down on as descendants of Israelites. They look down on as Israelites, so they acknowledge them as Israelites. That's all I want. Go down to the next one I want. Is that all I want? Uh, A tribe in Rousseau. No, I don't want that. Go to the next page. Page four, what page is that? 451 now? Or 452? Mm -hmm. No, that, that, that was 451. 
Um, four, five, three, four, five, three. Four, five, three. Sorry about that. Four, five, three. Let's get some more out this Jewish encyclopedia. Ah, oh, boy. Migrations of what? What does that say, Cat? No, no, I want that bottom part. I want the bottom, the bottom, the bottom. That's all I want, right the bottom. There. Right there, right there. Yes, stay there. Migrations there. of Jews into West Africa. Migrations of Jews into where? Into West Africa. Where are the majority of slaves brought to in America from? West Africa. Go ahead. Legends of Semitic migrations into of the... what kind of migrations? Semitic migrations. Legends of Semitic, <laughs> Semitic, Semitic migrations in the what? Into the what? Into the Maghreb, North Africa. Into the Maghreb is Morocco. Out is uh, T Tunisia, Mauritania, Northwest Africa. That's the Maghreb. That's the Maghreb today. Go ahead. Ancient Carthage, that's Maghreb. Numidia, that's Maghreb. Go ahead. According to most accounts, the earliest Israeli settlements in Israeli. We're gonna do that word later on. The earliest Israeli. There's no Israelis during this time. That, that word is non-existent. We're gonna do that word later on. The earliest Israelite settlements. Go ahead. And Africa were in places such as Egypt. Right. We always we always flood there. Remember Jeremiah 44. Go ahead. Tunisia. Tunisia is ancient Carthage. Tunis today. Tunis. Go ahead. And Ethiopia. And where? Ethiopia. Where they took the, them, them Jews from. It said that they're a tribe of Dan. Remember that? Go ahead. Historians believe these settlements may have been in existence as early as the kingdoms of David and Solomon. As early as when? The kingdoms of David and Solomon. So they've been there since David and Solomon we've been there in these, in these lands. So the, these, G, these Jews, these weren't white people living in these lands during David and Solomon's time. Read on. As well as during the Assyrian invasion of northern Israel in 722 BCE. When Assyria came into power, Israel fled into Africa to escape Assyria. Go ahead. And the Babylonian captivity of Judah in 586 BCE. When in Babylon rose up, Israel fled into Africa again. When Babylon rose up. In the Punic Carthaginian age. And uh, during Hannibal's time, they fled there also. Hannibal's also an Israelite. Go ahead. These communities were augmented by subsequent arrivals of Jews after the destruction of the second Jerusalem second, temple. Right, so when 70 AD took place, there was even more of us in Africa now. We fled even further into Africa from the Romans in 70 AD. Give me that real quick, Luke 21, real quick. How much time? I got time? You got time? Luke 21? All praises. Luke 21? <laughs> yeah, the, book of Luke. the Lord gave me time, Max. I'm sorry, sir. The Lord gave me time. Luke 21. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall... Verse 20. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Right. The desolation means the land will be desolate of its people. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Those who are in Judea flee to the mountains of where? Africa. We're reading it now. Flee into Africa, the mountains of Africa, which is right next door. Same land, actually. It's further into the interior. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Those who are in Judea, get out of there, escape, leave. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries there enter there into. Those who live outside of the country, don't come back in. Stay where you're at. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance. These be the days of prophecy being fulfilled according to Moses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 68. You're going to go on ships. You'll be scattered among the nations. These things had to be fulfilled. So that had to take place. Go ahead. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things written in, according to Moses in Deuteronomy 28, the curses and so forth, may be fulfilled. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child. Go ahead. And to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land. Uh -huh. And wrath upon this people. And wrath upon, destruction upon our people. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Fall by the edge of whose sword? The Roman sword. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive. Led away and, what? And shall be led away captive. Into where? Into all nations. All scattered among all nations. Wow. All right. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And Jerusalem shall be what? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. I mean, other nations, nominal Jews, imposters shall walk upon the land until their time in the land is up. So all this cover-up, this anti-Semitism stuff you coming with, you coming at the wrong people. 
Go, you better curse them Arabs out over there. Curse, call them anti Semites. You know, even though they're Semites too, dummies. Read on. Verse 25. That's all That's I want. It. That's all I want. So Israel fled into Africa. We're reading it out of their own <coughs> encyclopedia and out the Bible. Because without the Bible, they, this wouldn't exist here. Um, read on. There's more on that? Yeah, right, read on. There's more. Back. There's more, yeah. Go, you was at uh, Babylonian captivity, mm -hmm. 586 BC. Let's see. No, 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 no these, yeah, these uh, communities. Mm -hmm. These communities? were augmented by subsequent arrivals of Jews after the destruction of the Second Jerusalem Temple in 70 A.D. 70 A.D. Go ahead. When 30,000 Jewish slaves were settled throughout Carthage by the Roman Emperor Titus. So 30,000 Jewish slaves were settled throughout Carthage, which would be Tunisia or Tunis, during the time of Rome. They put, they put us in plantations or, 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 or colonies in um, North Africa, Northwest Africa, during this time, we were slaves. When Rome fell, we were free. So there was a whole bunch of us, thousands of us in Africa, long after Titus, long after Vespasian, long after, long after, until the black um, seeds took over, Septimius and so forth. So now, let's get, um, uh... Next page, page 454. That's 453, right? Yeah. 454. Four. Nick, Deshaun, I got to learn. Come learn. Come and be given true information. If you were speaking with truth, you just lack the men behind you to do it, to bring it forth. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let us take care. Let, let us take. Let us handle it. You help. You help us out. Assisting this truth the way you can. You 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 can. And we got you, Deshaun. We got you. Don't let these people put fear in y'all, man. They know. They know nothing. They're liars. Read that. Page four fifty four. Some accounts place West African Jewish communities. In the Ondo forest of Dahomey, south of Timbuktu. West Africa. Some accounts place West African Jewish communities. West African Jewish community. This is black people. In Ondo forest of Dahomey, south of Timbuktu. Go ahead. In the 1930s, these groups still maintained a Torah scroll. Even till now, these groups, from back then till now, maintain a, have a Torah <laughs> scroll. Go ahead. Written in Aramaic that had been burned into parchment with a hot iron instead of ink so it could not be changed. Aramaic goes back to David and Solomon. Ancient Hebrew, not that BS Ben Yehuda Hebrew that they teach now, Yiddish garbage. Act, they had their um, written records in, burned in paper in the ancient Hebrew, the real Hebrew. Go down. The decline. You got it? Yeah. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West African Maghreb. Of the West African what? Maghreb. West Africa Maghreb. Go ahead. Most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders into the North Africa started in 640 CE. Right, 640 AD. So it's going into the decline of Judaism in this, in this land. It, it began to decline because the Arabs, Islam started coming in and pushing Islam. So that's why I said earlier, Oscar Muhammad came in and began to force us to convert to Islam or leave. Leave meaning put you in slavery, enslave you or kill you. Read again. The decline. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West African and Maghreb most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders into North Africa, uh -huh. started into 640 CE and later into West Africa in the 1300s and the 1400s AD. See, later, see it says um, starting later, it says, uh, and later into the West Africa in 13 and 14. Because by that time, we start, to, we start to fall. Once Spain, once, once the white men took over Spain from us, we flipped back into Africa, the, they, we, we ran to the Arabs. It was a wrap. Trans-Saharan slave trade, which turned into the transatlantic slave trade. Go ahead. The Jewish Berber, Queen... The what, Horn? The Jewish what? Berber... Queen. Stop. The Jewish Berber queen. I want you to focus on that word. Semitic and Jewish Berber queen. The word Berber 
goes back to the word Barbary. The word Barbary goes back to the word barbarian. The Greeks and Romans refer to all the Israelites or inhabitants of the Maghreb or North Africa as barbarians or the Barbary states. The Barbary states or Berbers. The Berbers were Jews. Initially, originally, they were Jews. Now they're referred to as Arabs because the Arabs sold us to the white man and got us out of there. Or those of us who they didn't sell, who willfully, subvert, willfully converted to Islam, they assumed our identity now. Now they, they're referred to by the white man. The white man refers to the Arabs over there now as Berbers. But the initial Berbers were Israelites. Okay? Read again. The what queen? The Jewish Berber queen. It says the Jewish Berber queen because she was observing Judaism. She was an Israelite woman living in this state. The Jewish Berber queen what? Kahina. Kahina. Go ahead. Dahaya bint Tabatit. Ibn. It says um, Dahaya bint Tabata mm. ibn Tefan. She was, that was her name. Tabata. Tabata, daughter of, I'm sorry, Dahaya, daughter of Tabata, son of Tefan, right? That's T-F-I-N, T-I-F-A-N? Yes, sir. Son of Tefan. Go ahead. That's her name. They called her El Kahina, I mean the priestess. Go ahead, because she was a pro- so she can. She, she, it said that she had visions. She can foretell events, and she was beating the Arabs behind. She could. They could not stop her. She was the. She was the Harriet Tubman before Harriet Tubman. She was beaten behind and taking names. Go ahead. Who was also known as El Kahina. Right, the priestess. Go ahead. Led the most notable uprising against the invasion. Uh huh. Believed to have been a descendant of the Israeli priestly class. Of the Israeli priestly, she was a Levite. Of the Israel, Israelite priestly class, Levite. Go ahead. Al Kahina was able to lead North African Jews, Berbers, Christians, and Greeks alike against the invasion until her defeat at the hands of the Arab commander Hassan ibn Numan. Right. So he, she lost to this Arab guy because she was. I'll get to that later on in my series how she lost. She had a weak spot. She had a, well, I'll get to that another time. Let's get um. Volume 3. I want volume 3 now. I wasn't going to do it, but now that I have time, I'm going to do it. Volume 3, I want page 1094. We're going back to the scripts, but I want the books. I've read a lot of scriptures. I want the books now. 1094 is another encyclopedia, Jewish encyclopedia. Remember the terms Berber? And remember the, the term Israeli. I haven't forgotten them. Don't y'all forget them either. Right there. Well, I penciled in. Volume three. Go down, go down, go down. I don't want that. Go down, go down. To the bottom. Right there. The Jews. The Jews came into Kazaria. Remember? Mm-hmm. The bottom part. Go ahead. On, on Kazarian tombstones, there? No. The Jews came to Kazaria. Very bottom. Okay. The very bottom, I told you. Remember the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Jews came to Kazaria from modern day Uzbekistan, Armenia, Hungary, Syria, Hungary, Syria, Turkey, Turkey, uh-huh. Iraq, and numerous other places. Because during this time, you had the Holy Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, we read, about that, read about that earlier. They were pushing Christianity, pagan Roman Christianity. And so many Jews were facing persecution under black. Emperors like Septimius Severus, like Emperor Justinian, these were a bunch of house Negroes on the, on the Roman throne, upholding and uplifting Roman ideals. So many Israelites or, who, who held true to Judaism or Messianic Judaism began to flee into lands where um, religion, they were neutral, they can live free and neutral in the land. So a lot of us fled to Syria and these different places, and we ended up in Caesarea. We ended up in Europe. And we came, we went, the Khazarians were pagan, they were neutral. They, they weren't Muslim or Christian. We said, okay, we're safe here, we'll stay here, we'll live here, and we can, we can observe our Judaism here. And because of that, that influence, the Khazars said, hey, what are you guys observing? We're observing the Bible. Okay, teach us. And then we taught them. And, they obs- and after they became Jewish or nominals, that's why his name was King Joseph. Because, he, because that whole, eventually they began to all keep, the Khazars began to convert to Judaism. So they changed the name from like King Obadiah, you had King Manasseh, you had King Joseph, 
things that because they all converted during the eighth and ninth centuries when Israel, real Jews, fled into Caesarea and began to teach the Khazars Judaism and Talmudism because many of them fled from Babylon. Many of us fled out of Babylon and um and um from other areas into Caesarea and taught them the Talmud and taught them Judaism and that's how they converted over. They became converts or Israelis or Jewish. All right, so read and watch this. So by, the so by the 10th century, most of them are converted. Watch this. By the 10th century, the Khazars wrote to, in Hebrew letters. Right, because we taught them Hebrew letters. Go ahead. And major Khazar documents from that period were written in Hebrew. Right, because we taught them while we lived there. Go ahead. While we Israelites lived there. Go ahead. O Melajan, Pritstock, a well-known researcher of Khazarian history, estimated that there were as many as 30,000 Jews in Khazaria by the 10th century. Right, go ahead. During the 10th and 11th centuries, the young Russian kingdom inherited most of the former Khazar lands. Right, the Russians would be um, Edomites or white, white folks, Russians that were, they were pagan. They didn't care about Judaism, and they took, and eventually conquered or pushed out um, the Khazars. They were referred to as the Kiev Rus. Kiev, there's a place in Russia called Kiev. The Kiev Russians or Kiev Rus pushed them out of those lands and took them over, took Russia over from them, from the Khazars, which was their original capital. Go ahead. Despite the loss of their nation. Despite losing their land. Go ahead. The Khazar people. The Khazar people. Go ahead. Did not disappear. They didn't go. They, they, didn't, they weren't a myth. They weren't a hypothesis. They, weren't, they didn't vanish. Where'd they go? Some of them migrated to northern Caucasus. They migrated further up north. Go ahead. Or westward into Hungary. Romania. And next to that, and above, um, above that is Poland, and next to Poland is Germany. And Poland. And Poland, where they became sheep herders prior to migrating into Germany, where they ran into Hitler, mm -hmm. observing a Negro religion that wasn't theirs. And Hitler was very upset about that. He didn't like his people observing nigger religions. So is there a book that substantiates that, written by... You, by you nominal Jews, of course. Do I have it? Of course I have it. I have many of them. Give me uh, the one that Deshaun pulled first. Bring it out. Bring it out, Deep. <laughs> you, you can't make this up. I don't Bring know who I think smoke. you're Bring the who smoke. Who think you're dealing with? Max. <laughs> Maxie boy. This comment about basketball, that's it. Yeah, this rap and, and whatever you were doing. Yeah. You're not a scholar. No, and Listen, I'm not sorry at all. We're not sorry. Unapologetic. Sorry, I don't Nick understand. Demands I don't demand understand. I don't understand you. his apology. I, I don't get yeah, it. I, I don't, don't understand. I need details. Yeah, I, I need. I need details. Yeah, you prove your history, bastard. <laughs> you prove. You prove yourself. Yeah, you prove yourself. The hell is this? The giants say he was wrong. Read that right there. Well, go to the other page. What's the page? One, is there other pages there? Okay, the read that. Read that. Read is. that. This is a book. Um, that Jashan was quote he didn't he didn't even say it. he just he just posted it. Deacon, he said nothing. He said not a just word. Post the page. He just posted a page. So I'm gonna quote it now. I'll take the smoke. It says the read that read it there. The Americans have the jewels of God. Right. The Americans stolen God's precious jewels. Now this book claims that Hitler made this statement that the Americans have the jewels of God. Go ahead. What do you mean his precious jewels? The soldier asked. His soldier asked. Go ahead. Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. Mm -hmm. They're the true Hebrews. What a foolish move in a direct challenge to God. Go ahead. And they plan on moving these false white Jews into a state of Israel. That's true. America is desperate in its attempt to win this war using atom bombs on Japan. America will destroy the whole world in its attempt to conquer it. Go ahead. When America, its Jewish slave masters, conquer the world and the world realize, hey, I was right, then all nations will begin a third world war to dethrone America of its rule. That's true. Revelation 7, that's true. That's the Bible. So if, if this is false, what's being written is true. That's in the Bible. We just read it earlier. Ten, seven heads, ten horns. Go ahead. Every nation will soon possess atom bombs of their own. They do. Go ahead. <coughs> It will be the end of the world as we know it. Why will the Jews control America, the soldier asked. Next page. Hitler said, 
Because the white Jews knows that the Negroes are the real children of Israel. They do know. It's in their books. We read it. We read it. So this book is not a lie thus far. So far is accurate. Whether Hitler said these things or not, I don't know. But what's written is true. Go ahead. And to keep Americans, America's secret, the Jews will blackmail America. I don't know what that means. I, I, don't, I don't know what that means either. I don't know. Blackmail, I guess it means blackmail means I guess they'll have America in their pocket maybe. Go ahead. They will extort. They... The, they will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes know who they are. Right. Who they were. Know who they were. Go ahead. The white citizens of America will be terrified to know that all this time they've been mistreated and discriminated uh, and lynching the children of Israel. That's all I want. So, so Deshaun Jackson, brother, you posted this. Now, I would say if Hitler said this, it's 100% on point. All right? The wording is a bit confusing. That's why I said I didn't know what it meant. But from what I got, it says black male America means they'll pretty much ex they'll use America to they'll benefit from it. The IMF bank and so forth, money, they run everything. That's far, that's what I get out of it. But just in case that book doesn't really validate any, it's, it's not really substantiated by facts, let's get another book that is. Give me the next book with Hitler himself. Hey, make sure you tag Deshaun Jackson into this post. Right. And Nick. And Nick. And Nick. And Cube, too. Uh, this is a book, a magazine, which is published by, again, Israelis. All right? Now, go up. Go up. I'm with the picture. Go up. Right there. This is, a, this is Hitler now. Blow it up some. I want to see the words. I want the picture for now. Just move it over. Move it over. Move it over. I want that picture centered in that thing in the bottom there. Now, Hitler's watching a movie. All right, we what it says in the bottom. I'm um, Cap. Goebbels and Hitler personally appraised a new German movie. They're watching a movie. They're on the theater watching a movie. Go ahead. When the Führer complained that the films espousing the Nazi line were too scarce, Goebbels rushed a pair of anti-Semitic pictures into production. So now, so the, 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 the author of this magazine is saying that Hitler was posting some anti-Semitic pictures into production. What anti-Semitic pictures was he was he putting in production? Blow, let's let's zoom out now. Let's blow blow it out. Let's just go back. Zoom out. Zoom out. Move it over. Move it over to the middle, real quick. Real quick. Come on, move it over. Move it over to the middle. Move it over, 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 over. Center, center it. I don't want the, that left. I want the middle. I don't want that either. I want you to move it over move it to the middle. Right. Come on, man. To the middle. As far as it goes, oh, it's the other half, it's the page. Shoot. All right. All right. Well, shoot. Um, you look right there. Blow it up some. You see? Move it over. Uh, it says Oriental in. Yeah, take a picture of the actual, of the whole page. Okay. Well, give us a minute. We're going to take a picture of the whole page so all y'all can see it. Is that the book here? I'm going to take a picture of the whole page. I forgot. It's, I forgot. I, um, I took, we, we, we cut it in half. My fault. My fault. My fault. We cut it in half. I'm saying go over like this. The whole page. Yeah. <laughs> I take. I take the L. My fault. I'm. Cur I curse you out. I'm sorry. Never right. take the L, DK. No, I had to. I, all right. <laughs> Shoot. What? Um. You sent the picture. You get it. We're gonna drop it now so y'all can see. So I'm showing you. Now this book. I believe the book we read earlier. It. Um, the, the author of the, of the first book earlier, if you read earlier, she cites from this book here. This book is completely accurate. Oh, I'm going to read it. Gonna read read the, the, the oh, I know. I, oh, I know. I'm going to set up for last. I know. I'm looking at it. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I want to set up for last. Look what? For last. Yes, yes. That's why. So if, that, if, Hitler, didn't, if Hitler didn't say those things in that last book, it doesn't matter. Because it's true according to the Bible anyway. Now, you see there what they have, what he's looking at. Those are slides. He has Orient, that's an Arab right there to the left, so-called Arab right there. And he has Hamilton to the right. See there? Hamilton. See that? Ham. To the right, see it? Right. No, Hamilton to the right. Ham. To the Ham. far right. Hamilton. To the far right. 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 Now look in the middle. It's kind of in the middle of the page, the crease of the page. No, 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 right there. Go, 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 go up. Right that says nigger, nigger, as a Negro, right there. Then it has a picture, I think it's a picture right there of um, uh, Dion, I'm not sure who that is, right there. 
Might be Egyptians, maybe. I'm not sure. Israelites, I'm not sure. But it says right there, look at the bottom, it says Oriental and it said Hamite. See, so it says Asia. So Oriental means Asia, like north, the, the east. Then it has black people, as in Ham, right there. Then it says, uh, it says Jude, Eftain, Judah right there, Jews. Look over, move it over. It has a so called right there. What does it say? Move it over some? Okay, that says bastard there. <laughs> the F right there is the S. Bastard. Damn. He's saying the, this guy here does not match up with the guys above. Damn. Asian, ham, Negro, they all have an association with Middle East. These guys here are bastards, is what he's saying. There you go. There you go. Blow it up some. Right there. Bastard. See? Nice big letters. Bastards. Bastards. Zechariah 9 and 6, please. We're going to read the other part, LaCroix. Please remind me if I forget. Yes, Zechariah 9 and 6. We're not done. We're just getting started. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. A ba Ashdod is Tel Aviv today. A bastard, meaning God is not their people. They have no God. So they are bastards in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the Bible. Go ahead. In the words of the Bible. Go ahead. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Or Palestinians who also reside there falsely, who are fighting over the land against each other. All right? So now, go back to that page again. We're going to read. We're going to show you. I'm going to show you. What we, you see it, it, said, it, said, it said Oriental in, Oriental, as an Asian, or Asia, um, Arab. And it says nigger as a Negro. <coughs> Some other word I can't understand. I'll look into that later on. I might bring it up next week. Then it says over. It says, um, what's over? It says over. It says, um, over. It says, uh, Hamilton. Right? Now go read. Is that it right there? What I want? What you want? No, the, the top one. Oh, top, 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 top. Right there. The small letters there. Read that, please, Scott. Blow it up. Yeah, blow it up so everybody can see it. We can all read together. We can read. We can read now. Awesome. Go ahead. In one segment of a Nazi instructional film, right? Instructional film. This is, <clears throat> this is Hitler's giving an instructional film to his men in that movie theater. Go ahead. The genetic heritage of the Jew is purportedly traced in Oriental so, and go on, the, but, but, go on. It says the genetic heritage of the Jew is purportedly traced in the what? To Oriental. To Oriental. Go ahead. Negro. Negro. Near Asian. Near Asian. And Hermetic people. Meaning black people. Mm. That's what he's saying. Mm. They don't look like you, bastards on the bottom picture. That's what he's saying. Read on. Hence, the film concludes, the Jew is a bastard. Right. I mean, the fake That's ones right. who posing as Jews are bastards. They're not the real ones. This is in your books, Max. This is in your people's books, Max. Somebody tag Max into. That's all I want from so that. Because that, that's the reason why he was burning them. That's the reason why, the only, yeah. Because the only way you become a Jew, I got to burn you to right. be black. Because, <laughs> because you up here proclaiming to be something you're not. I'm trying to, push, I'm trying to push racial white purity. You want some Negro stuff. Right. You want some Asian, Asiatic stuff. Max, what you No, no it said Asian, right? Near Asian. I'm going to deal with that also. Why it says Asian? Because Asia, another term, Asia means East. It means, Oriental means the East, far East. Mm -hmm. You go Asian, you call them Orientals. We're Orientals. Mm -hmm. We were there too. We were there too, and we were there also. Don't spoil your class. <laughs> give me, uh, give me um, mm -hmm. definition of Semitic people, definition of Semitic. Definition of Semitic, Google. Anti-Semitic, you're anti-Semitic. So tidy out using that word, man. What did that woman say? It's a toy. We use it. It's a toy. We use it. We use it. It's a toy. It's a toy. It's a trick. It's a trick. It's a trick. It's a trick. If, if we, we hear it in Europe, we we'll say we mentioned the Holocaust. If it's mentioned in America, then it is anti-Semitic. We use it. <laughs> Lord, up, please read that. <laughs> you niggas don't know anything. You don't read the books. You don't read anything. That's why you don't know anything. We can call you all tempted niggas. You want to know it. You don't read. You argue, you rap, you dance. 
You had him shake. You had him shake. <laughs> Jiggy boot and cool. bounce. Jiggy bounce. Jiggy bounce. Jiggy bounce. Thing that you do. I cannot do it, but you do these dead things. And you twerk. <laughs> you twerk, twerk, twerk. We kill your babies and we take your baby's limbs and we use them for meat. Read that. Submit it. <laughs> you got it? Okay, Submit it. it. Submit it. Re- Relating to or denoting a family of languages that includes Hebrew, Arabic, and Aramaic. So did the Israelites and West Africans write in Aramaic? We read earlier that they, have, they found a parchment burned in, burned in parchment Aramaic. So the, those were that Ebos? That was it, those at Nigerians or, or what was that? That was Nigerians, right? Right. Yes. Those are the, uh, Yerubi, the uh, Yoruba Jews. Yoruba Jews, right. So they had history of writing in Aramaic and speaking Aramaic. So that makes them Semitic. It's, and it's Hebrew, Arabic. Do our people speak Arabic today in, 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 in Islamic lands today? Yes. So that makes them Semitic also. Go ahead. So Semitic is a language and a people. <coughs> but biblically, it's a people first. Read again. Relating to or denoting a family of languages that includes he- Hebrew, Arabic, and Aramaic, and certain ancient languages such as Phoenician and Akkadian. Uh-huh. Akkadian, Akkadian because Akkadia was ancient Babylon, Babylon and Assyria merged together. The Assyrians were Semitic, so they shared the language. Go ahead. Or the Chaldeans were Semitic, they shared the language. Go ahead. Constituting the main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic family. Constituting what? The subgroup, main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic family. Constituting the main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic subfamily. Afro-Asiatic family. Semites are part of a Afro-Asiatic family. Hmm. Read the next definition. Relating to the peoples who speak Semitic languages, especially Hebrew and Arabic. Go click. Let's go to type in Afro Asiatic, please. Type in Afro definition of Afro Asiatic. There we go. Blow that up, please. Don't forget what I mentioned to y'all earlier about uh, uh, Berber, Jewish Queen Kahina. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Read that. Afro Asiatic. Re- relating to or denoting a family of languages spoken in the Middle East and North Africa. And the Maghreb, North Africa, where Jews fled to. Go ahead. The family is commonly divided into five groups. Let's see what groups that is. Semitic. Semitic group. O- Ormatic. Ahmadic. Berber. Berber. Cushitic. Cushitic. Ethiopia. And Shadic. Shadic as Chad. Go ahead. Ancient Egyptian was also a member of this family. It was part of shared language. It was, remember, everyone spoke Hebrew at one time, but eventually got divided up, so different dialects. But we want to deal with the Semitic and the Berber, the Berber part. Scroll down, please. Scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down. It should show like a map. More, more, more. More, more. There we go. More, more. Wait, wait, go, 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 go up, go up. Right. It mentioned, it says Hamido Semitic. It says Semitic Hamo and Hamo Semitic. Bring it in, son. Hamido Semitic, it mentions that by name. That's the map beat that you're looking for? Nah, it mentions, it shows it under that. Hold on. Let me see something. Give me a second. Yo, Cap, say something, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> he kind of caught me off guard this one. I'm sorry. Um, okay, that, that was a map uh, uh, all the way up. So yeah, type in, type, in Afro, so, type, type in Afro Asiatic. You used to see a map, but it should say Afro Asiatic. Yeah, the the map, go up, go up. Right no, there. no, 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 not that. No, no, no. It's an image of a map. It looks like this. It's like this. Type in Afro Asiatic. Type in Afro Asiatic by itself. Just type in Afro Asiatic. So, what you're seeing today is the migration. And how so-called Jewish people got their so-called down, cultural heritage today, which was stolen and actually taught from us. Yet all the all the way um, from the time of John Hycrenus during the Maccabean period, when we forcibly converted all the Edomites living in Idumium. So it started from the Herodotans, um, from John Hycrenus, um, we converted Herod and his family, and from Herod and his family, you had, um, like I said, that's why in, um, during the time period of Rome. 
you have him being set over Judea as one of the king over Judea because of why? From the forced conversion from John Hycranus II, right. which was the son of Simon Maccabees. Um, also, now further up. That's the initial conversion of the, of, mm -hmm. the, of the so called. Yep. Herod's babies. And then from thence, after 70 AD, as we fled out from Jerusalem to coastal West Africa, later on, as the deacons pointed out, Fast forward to history, we dwelt in Africa, land Africa, North Africa, the Maghreb. We migrated also into West Africa. Um, we inhabited Spain, um, Italy, Italy, and then we England. were pushed out of those regions into the Khazarian regions, and that's where we taught in 700 AD um, the Khazarians. Right. That's where they learned from our us. Right. We might we we felt from other areas, including there as well. To your mm -hmm. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And we migrated, and that's where we taught them our her heritage once again. So these are the same people over and over and over again, relearning our history. Mm -hmm. Now the only difference now is we went into slavery, and our history was completely taken from us, and they took our history. So it's trading places. That's all it is. Yep, so read that right there, Afro-Asiatic languages. Is that it? Is it Semo-Semitic? The biggest deception on this earth is the Israelite deception. Who are the true Jews? That's the biggest deception. Go up, go up, go up, go up. That's all I want. This is Afro-Asiatic. And like I said, we see a lot of our people, um, you see in the news media with the anti-Semitic comments being thrown out there, or anti-Semitism being thrown out there more and more, because it's a testament of us coming closer to the end times. You, the more you see our people waking up is a, uh, is a rush for, more, for Esau to silence our voice. Because on a low level, we don't, have, we don't have control over the media. And the media, as you, as you see, has the ability to reach the masses of the people. Now, the, what the Most High is doing, as you can see, as a chess move is he's utilizing... At the history and information that we're bringing out, and the, to, um, this during this virus, the lockdown period, you have a lot of people that are not distracted from sports, that are not distracted from baseball, football, basketball, which are primarily black sports. So now people, you have black athletes and celebrities have a time on their hand to sit down, open a book, read, watch YouTube. And some people come across our information, and you see a lot of people within a free time coming across our information are starting to post. Post things concerning our history. That's like yeah, Deshaun Jackson. He didn't always know he was Israel. This is new information. Mm -hmm. So that's why he said, this is new. Let me put this out there. Mm -hmm. And what Esau doesn't understand is this. Um, yeah, good. I, I found um, it. Get Proverbs it. 16 real I found quick. It. Okay, yeah. You want to get that first? There's one scripture. Yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah. Proverbs 16, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Book of Proverbs. Is that it? Let me see if that's it. Uh, if somebody tried to roll a, is it seventeen? This says an ungodly man diggeth up evil. Where's the one that says he tried to roll a stone and diggeth its own? Oh man, that's an. Uh... Yeah, I look for it. Well, what happened? What ends up happening is. Whenever, whenever you, whenever you have a brother that starts seeking knowledge on their own, and, and, and they're not going to so cause to do it, they attack you. Like you notice that when Nick Cannon mentioned with the true Hebrews, he had to have a sit down with a so-called rabbi to educate him and enlighten him on the culture of being a Hebrew. Or the, the people over in Nigeria, same thing. Oh, we're gonna go over there and teach you how to be a Jew. No, we are the Jews. We don't need your assistance in teaching us who we are. Right. You're not who you say you are. Right. They do that all the time. Okay, well, you know your Jews? Let us come to, let us teach you. Let's say in Christianity. Or oh, you want to know about God? Let us teach you. Come to church. It's the same methods, the same colonial garbage. You got a cap? You found it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. So Amalek is trying to, or Esau, is trying to dig a pit for Deshaun Jackson, Nick Cannon, um, Ice Cube. Who else was there? Um, that came out with you had, uh, um, you had, Dwayne, you had Dwayne Wade, player. you had uh, Justin Wright. No, no, no. With uh, us being Israelites. Oh, so, yeah, Sean so Jackson, Nick Cannon, Cannon Ice, Cube. Ice Cube. Yes. So it says, "Whoso diggeth a pit, read. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, mm -hmm. and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him." So they're trying to dig a pit. They're trying to silence our voices in the media. They're trying to 
They're trying to crucify Nick Cannon and Deshaun Jackson as well as Ice Cube, trying to discredit them and dismantle them, take away their careers. But what they're not understanding is Max Kellerman doesn't understand in his intellectual scholarship. He doesn't understand by him speaking on the matter, trying to discredit Nick Cannon's scholarship. He's actually bringing more curiosity to the masses of our people. Right. As you see in the comments with the Nick Cannon speech, they say, yo, I have to know what is it that he's saying for them to fire him for Viacom. Right. Think about they're not they're not firing people like um what's the name stated? They didn't TI stated. They didn't fire the cops for the murder of Breonna Taylor. Right. So what statement is so detrimental and so important that it, ha- it caused the firing of a man after a 20 year relationship? Yep. So there's something be there has to be truth behind it. What is the truth? This is the truth. Yep. Yeah, we the Israelites. We the Israelites. That's, That's the truth. That's why they fire them. So you want to dig a pit, it shall fall upon you. Yep. You shall roll a stone, it shall it shall roll over you. Yep. Genesis the truth 50, is coming out. Genesis 50 verse 20. This was this was their intention, but it's the most this is the most high said. So the truth is the new hate speech now. Yeah, the truth is the new hate speech. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe Trump has passed a law, and not, they're, not, they're not specifying it regarding religion. And I believe. Bishop has told us, we believe as well, that they're going to pass laws eventually that's going to prohibit us from going out in the street and teaching the Bible as it is written Mm -hmm. and make it unlawful or illegal for us to say anything against these lying bastards, these nominals, these so-calls. And we're going to do it anyway. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 50, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So if they thought doing to the Kenner was evil, or uh, Ice Cube was evil, or the Deshaun was evil, the most I made it good because now you've, you've just now you've created more curiosity. The more angry you get, Max, the more attention you bring into us. That's just all I understand. There's no esoteric conspiracy, Sam, Mr. Kestenbaum. There's no esoteric conspiracy, man. It's what it is. It's facts. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate, but we appreciate you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Give me um. <coughs> you got it, but I want it. Read that. Apple Asiatic. You got it, cat. Yes, sir. Apple, read that. Afro Asiatic. Watch this. Also known as Afrasian. Afrasian, Afro Asian. Go ahead. And in older sources as Hamito Semitic. And or- in older sources. As in Hamito, meaning because you had Semites and Ham- Hamites and Semites mingled together, intermarry. Go ahead. Or Semito Hamites. Or you had Shemites intermarry with Hamites. Semites being the majority, Ham the minority. Ham being the majority in some instances, Shem the minority. But that's, that's what it means by Afro Asiatic. Go ahead. It's a large language family of about 300 languages that are spoken predominantly in West Africa, Asia. West Asia? North Africa. The Horn of Africa and parts of the Sahel. So, again, Afro Asiatic is still dealing with Asia and parts of Africa. The Near East and parts of Africa. All right? Afro Asiatic. All right? Black Middle Easterns, basically, we're saying. Black Middle Eastern people is what it's talking about. Hamito. And look at the words. Hamito Semitic. So, when you evil heathens say the Bible is in the true book, where do you get Ham from? Where do you get Shem from? Where do them names come from? Ain't those Noah's kids? Ain't Noah in the Bible? Where these names come from? Where's Semitic come from? Semitic. Where that word come from? Don't it come from Shem? So, oh, evolution. Oh, the earth is a big bang. Okay, well, where the hell does Shem, Ham, and Java come from then? Ain't no big bang happened when they was around. Bunch of liars, man. Give me um, Wikipedia Moors. Don't forget what I said to y'all. Mamba, give me Israeli first. Give me Israeli first. I want that first. You hold on to that. Israeli. Let's read, read that, Jess. What that says? Israeli. Israeli. Citizen of the state of Israel. What year is this word coined? Read the date. 1948. That is the year. That is the year the word Israeli was made. The same time the state was established. So that before that, there was no term ever in the history of Bible or Israelites, Israeli. Read what Israeli is again. Read it from the top. Israeli. Citizens of the state of Israel. Citizens of the state of Israel. Go ahead. 
1948. Nine, that's the time it was created. 1948. Go ahead. From Israel plus Hebrew national designation. Suffix I. Also used in English as the uh, uh, adjective. Blah, blah, blah. It, distingu it distinguishes. It distinguishes the citizens of the modern state. Stop, from, stop, stop. You'll be that slow. Officer, read it slow. Read it again. It distinguishes the citizens of the modern state. The word Israeli distinguishes the citizens of the modern state. Go ahead. Of Israel. Go ahead. From the ancient people who had been since 14th century, since the 14th century, sorry, as Israelites. As what? Israelites. So the word Israeli distinguishes them from the actual Israelites. So when they say that they're Israelis, what are they saying? We're not the Israelites. We just live in the land. But we're not the actual people that were called Israelites in the 14th century. Which goes back to what? 1300s. Goes back to what? Us fleeing into Africa. Those are the Israelites. There were no Israeli settlements. This is from the ancient. From the ancient. people. Remember that picture we saw earlier on the, in, the, in Egypt on the walls? That's ancient. Ancient Israelites. So Israeli distinguishes them, I mean, makes them separate from the actual people. Thus the term Jewish. And notice how black people history starts when? Slave trade. Slave trade. Jewish people's history starts when? 1948. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Holocaust. You see the deception? Holocaust. <laughs> our, our history st starts. So it's the, the mystery is what happened before history. Right. Right. That's the mystery. Right. Before the, before the Holocaust, where were y'all? We decoded uh, us uh, before 1969. I mean, 1619. We, we decoded that. Now we figure you out. Right. Where were you before 1948? Now 19, we know. 1917 before that. 1917. Balfour Declaration before that. Where were you at before that? That's right, Deacon. Maybe Max Kellerman doesn't know his history. No. So we're going to educate him. Yeah. Max, <laughs> please, Max, please, if you're watching, please enlighten us on where this information. Mm -hmm. Where were y'all before the Balfour Declaration? Mm-hmm. And who are the Khazars and why are they in your encyclopedias? Before the Holocaust. Where were y'all before that? And where did, why are you calling yourselves Israelis to distinguish yourselves from Israelites? Aren't you Israelites? Why are you distinguishing yourselves from ancient Israelites if you're the ancient Israelites yourselves? What tribe are you from, Max? What tribe are y'all from? <laughs> right. Why are there only three tribes? Or four? Or Dan? Four? Where are the other, where, where the other uh, eight? Where they at? <laughs> Show us in the Bible, man. <laughs> come on, man. You, come on. Morse. Wikipedia. Morse. I got a page for you, too. Oh, gosh. Here we go. <coughs> Just on a page in a book. Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. Is this low information? Is this low information? <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Max? It's not low information. You hear that, Nick? Brother Nick? Deshaun, y'all hear that? I hope y'all hear it. I hope y'all listening. Don't be scared of these guys, Those man. you brothers who have access to, or, or connections with them... Send this video to them. Send this video to them, man. We got you. You got them. Let us talk. You got it? You sent it to them already? Because I can read this while I do it. Can we read it? Yeah. Read that. We'll do it. Moors. Moors. Go ahead. The Moors were the Muslim inhabitants of the Maghreb. Right. The Moors were Israelites. Remember, it said the forceful conversion under Oscar Muhammad. <laughs> so many of the Jews, they, out, they outlawed um, Judaism. So... Many of the, the Israelites who were, who were Jews either were falsely convert, converted into, into Islam or, or, pretended, or pretended to be Muslims under this reign. So they became known as Moors, which means blacks. So the, um, the Romans and Greeks referred to them as the Mordai tribe, and Mor meaning inhab an inhabitant of Mauritania. Okay, the word Morocco is Mauritania also, but the word Morocco is a play on the words for more as well. <laughs> It's really referred to as, the word Morocco is Marrakesh. Marrakesh means land of God, because God's people are living there. That's right. Marrakesh. But in English, they called it Morocco, because Moors is out of there also. So a Moor is an inhabitant of Mauritania. The inhabitants of Mauritania were called Berbers. They were Israelites that moved and conquered Spain. All right? So Moors, or blacks, Negroes, read, that, read again. The Moors were the Muslim inhabitants of the Maghreb. Of the Maghreb. Same place. Go ahead. The Iberian Peninsula. Or Spain. Go ahead. Sicily. Sicily. And Malta. And Malta will be an island where Paul visited in Acts. Go ahead. 
During the Middle Ages. During the Dark Ages, when blacks ruled the world. Go ahead. The Moors initially were the indigenous Maghrebin. Maghrebin. Berbers. The, the Moors were initially the indigenous Maghrebin, Maghrebin Berbers. So the Moors were the original Berbers, like Queen Kahena. We don't watch this. The name was later also applied to Arabs. Because the Arabs conquered us out, sold us in slavery, and assumed the identity as Berbers living in the land. Y'all understand? Y'all, you got, help, y'all, help you get it. So the original Berbers were Moors or Israelites that subscribed either to Messianic Judaism, Messianic Judaism, or Islam, either secretly or falsely, I mean openly or falsely. All right? That's all I want out of that. Now, get me, you got the page? Yes, sir, I got the page. What's it up? Commercial break? All right, so we're going to go on a break now. We're going to go on a break. You'll be back in 10 minutes. So until we admit, we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. We are the ones that are refusing to acknowledge our nation may end up facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. Uh, we stand together like legs on the centipede and put our knees in the neck of our enemies. I don't got no time for no negative energy. It's hard to get oppression out of my memories. Yeah, why are we supposed to be passive? Edomites out here acting real blackish. Black lives really don't matter till Christ come back and turn the world into ashes. Yeah, yeah. See, we gon' need some payback ASAP. Oppression make a wise man mad like Deacon ASAP. See, they ain't tryna pay the fee for slavery. Whitewashing entities striving to erase black. We gotta face facts, gotta be rational. I'm reppin' IU, we everywhere, international. We need our land back, absolute, non taxable. And it's a real revolution that's factual. Deacon Labaka, it's hammer time. Focus when I handle mine. Romans in that chapter 9, exposing all they fastest lies. We the ones they patronize. They the ones we agonize with broken bones and blackened eyes The toll of death we maximize And if you plan on making the kingdom then let's go We kicking in doors, burning down walls, no asbestos And I'ma tell you straight and direct, no innuendos And we gon' get away with it, why? Because we special, huh? And when that sky crack, it's over for a heathen Can't forget the two-thirds of my people stuck in treason Celebrating holidays ain't even got a reason So I'm sticking Santa's head in the bag cause tis the season that zoonosis was the cause of the COVID Then they switched the focus to killing us in the open But that ain't new, they been throwing Jews in the ocean, you know Gator baiting the black babies for tokens Them little henchmen been Willie lynching for a pension Then they sent the agents to Satan to cause dissension Yeah, we the chosen, but still ain't learning a lesson We gotta keep the laws if we really seek the vengeance This the payback, charged up since way back The Lord got a spirit bomb, no man can escape that And all you cats to rock, word the deacon ASAP It's repent or die, ain't no easier way to say that They realize that my family ties could cause demise They try to cause divides and they conquer, but they compromise All I see is death and dishonor being personified By bonafide basement in the basement where they mom reside They 
seen it coming The patience of the saints, man, we waiting to see them plummet We talking basement, even the basement above them It ain't gonna be no more running, ain't gonna be no more of them <laughs> We see the seed of Satan deceiving, but we've been waiting When he come with flame, it's gonna be Edom that need the saving So face it, and read the book of Revelation Obadiah, Isaiah, either way you wanna play it <laughs> I seen slaves on the horse, kings walk the earth Time to flip it back in order, who no call reverse The time is ticking till the slaughter come that y'all deserve The time is ticking till the daughter of Babylon burns You gotta know we coming, you stole the chosen land Just know the plan, the son of man is coming Then it's over for you, go grab some soap or something Cause blood is on your hands, so don't misunderstand The payback coming like we owe you something Rainy days were prayer, this Mayweather will be no more While they swing at the Lord and me, they saw your desolate up in this land of wars Ten rivals with seven heads injected with bombs like Al-Qaeda We drop diamonds, now Babylon, she lopsided Beside my 40 acres, run me my planet I boast against America, cause my blood is the advantage They hated Messiah first, so who am I to fail him? Tell Edgar Hoover's followers, we go harder than the Panthers This answer is for your babies, your mother's sons and your daughters In vanity you conceived, it was multiplied for the slaughter Never give them a drop of water just build our towers for 23 hours You slaving and filling public housing It's death before the dishonor Your death accepted by father Cause your manners ain't sitting right in my presence You should be bowing to the power Possessed the fifth converted Change entire counties Our payback collecting bounties One payment of heaven's fountain We're back, we're back, we're back. Uh, we didn't need to take a break, but I ain't got much left. So I had like a whole page left. I got like <laughs> a few things left. But I want to reflect back on um, the image I showed you of Hitler. Where he showed the Oriental, um, Asian, or uh, Arab. He showed Negro. He showed um, uh, him. And that goes, all, that all, all of that goes back to Afro-Asiatic. He was saying that the, that the people who claimed to be Jews in, this land, in the land at the time well, not who they said they were. From what, I, from what I've also heard, he was also a so-called Jew, you know, himself. But he didn't subscribe to that because he, he knew that religion, that religion didn't belong to him. You know, he wasn't about no, or no Judaism. He wasn't about that stuff. Even though I heard himself, he himself was also had, had so-called, he had Israeli ancestry, um, his ancestry himself. So you got, you got Jezreel's um, post. <laughs> you got something you want to show y'all? Real quick, real quick. Yes, D. This is a this is a book from the 1800s, 1859. 1859. So we were still in chains. D. If we can, can we go back to the uh, definition of the Israeli? Yeah, go to back to the definition. In? Yeah, go back to the definition of etymology of Israeli. Right. All right. So Israeli citizens of the state of Israel, 1948. Uh -huh. From Israel plus Hebrew national designation blah, blah, suffix. Blah, blah, All blah, right. Blah. Mm -hmm. It is. The citizens of the modern state from the ancient people. So that's what I want. Who were the ancient people that it distinguishes from, right? Let's get this page real quick. What well, year is this book again? What year is it again? 1859. When were slaves freed? Emancipation? 1865. So you weren't allowed to read this book. You weren't reading this. There's no black library. Where's the book? These nations keep tab these nations keep tabs on us, man. But we we can read now, so that's over. You know, as it happens, when, um, the, the, page. The, the nations they take it upon themselves. They 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 pass this information to their children. I have books that go back as far as 1600s, 1800s, 
Well, and before, I, I prefer books that were written when we was in chains. So those are the books that they have everything written raw, like the old dictionaries. All that's the best stuff. All that's the real stuff, you know? The clear, the real, the real that's defined, it's clear. There's no sugar, sugar coating. There's no whitewashing. It's just raw, you know? And they passed it on to their kids and their children's children. They put it in their libraries. We weren't around to read those, read those books. You found it? Yeah. Y'all have it? Yeah. All right, put it up. We weren't allowed to read these books, like the movie uh, Hidden, Hidden Figures. She wasn't allowed to go into a certain portion of the library. You know, she had to steal the book. Well, go ahead. Blow it up. All this other go, stuff is go to the bottom. BS. Go to the bottom, 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 it was blue, right there. What did I say? It says, the Jews appear to have been originally a dark-skinned and woolly-haired race. There you go. Mm. No, it says that the, the, the Jews appear to have been a dark, originally a dark-skinned and woolly-haired race. Race. Mm. Do you see that? Mm. So Trump had to pass an order to make them a race. But weren't they a race already, according to this book here? So what were they before that? Y'all keep thinking we stupid. We ain't playing, we ain't for your little, your little games. They were always a race. But they were a dark-skinned, woolly-haired race initially. All right? So yeah, that, that's why it says it distinguishes, it really distinguishes y'all from that definition there. The ancient ones. Give me Deuteronomy um, 33 verse 29. <laughs> we brought this out yesterday. We're going to bring it out again. We brought it out yesterday. We're going to read it again. Deuteronomy 33 verse 29. <laughs> the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel. Yeah, us, Israelites. Go ahead. Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord? No one. The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? Our God. Go ahead. And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Your enemies shall be found liars unto you. When the truth begins to grow and spread out there, you're going to find that your, that your enemies are liars. They lie in their words. They lie in their media. They lie in their intentions. They are liars. Go ahead. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. And once we figure that out, we're going to rule and we're going to tread upon their lands and take their land over. They're treading upon our land, we're going to tread upon their lands also. Forever. Give me um, 2 Maccabees 15, verse 9. Second Maccabees 15, verse 9. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 15, verse 9. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets. That's what we're doing right now. We're giving y'all comfort out of the law and the prophets, along with history that coincides and supports what the law and prophets say. Go ahead. And with all, putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. Yeah, the Mac <coughs> uh, made them more cheerful. Our forefathers, the Maccabees, made our brothers more cheerful, the leaders. Go ahead. And when he had stirred their minds, stirred up, their minds. Mm -hmm. He gave them their charge. Saying what? Showing them their withal, the falsehood of the heathen. What did he show them? The falsehood of the heathen. He showed them the what? Falsehood of the heathen. He showed them the falsehood of the heathen. He proved them to be liars. He showed them the falsehood of the heathen. We're showing y'all the falsehoods of the heathen. Go ahead. And the breach of oaths. And their false promises and their lies. Their politics is all lies. Go ahead. Thus he armed every one of them. So we are, so we arming y'all as well. We're arming you, Nick. We're arming you, Deshaun. We're arming you, Q. We're arm, we arming y'all. Go ahead. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defense of shields and spears. Not with physical weapons. Not with guns or, or bombs or bullets. Not with that, but what? what? As with comfortable, comfortable and good words. But with comfortable and good words from the law and the prophets. Go ahead. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed, as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice it them. It made them more happy. So the words of God is a, is a weapon. That's why these nations get mad as hell when we present it. Because, again, you have to learn, you brothers out there who are in the forefront, who are in the forefront in terms of, like, um, celebrity positions, y'all got to take the low. You cannot be out putting yourself out there like that. You got to be like um, Joseph of Arimathea. You got to be like Nicodemus. You have to be wise as a serpent serpent, and harmless as a dove. Flex All right? a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right, flex a little yeah, bit. Yeah, flex a little bit. Once in a while, get that knowledge, get that money, and flex a little bit. Right, flex <laughs> occasionally. 
Occasionally. That's Flex, okay, okay, TK said, man. Flex, <laughs> okay. occasionally. Yo, this guy's crazy. He's hilarious, man. <laughs> so, um, I hope y'all got something out of it. I mean, I don't know. It's the same thing. Like, what they want to say? <laughs> Can I get uh, put, uh, two yeah, scriptures? Sure, sure. Yes. After, after uh, let me get Matthew twelve, mm-hmm. verse thirty-one. That's a message for you, Nick and um, Cube and uh, Deshaun. Deshaun, uh, if Esau, the so-called white man, the devil, have something on you, this is what the Lord, our Lord and Savior, the Black Messiah, Christ, said. Mm-hmm. Matthew twelve thirty-one. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto, unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto so, men. Whatever it is that you have done or you, you used to do in those Hollywood parties, read that again. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and So whatever it was, whatever picture or whatever video they think they might have on you, if that's the case, you know, to, to force you to uh, give, uh, give up the truth. Read. And blasphemy uh-huh. shall be forgiven unto men. So the Lord, our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah said, your sin can be forgiven. So whatever it is, now you find the truth, your sin will be forgiven. All you have to do is repent and don't do it no more. Right. And you'll be all right. Right, because if, if a man's wife can go, on, can go on TV in public and say she was in an entanglement with a man half her age, you're going to be all right. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna, you, you gonna be just fine. Just repent, keep it moving, bro. You understand? So again, not, nothing new. Um, this, this, um, we can't allow. Is it um, Ezra? You got, you got, you got the two scriptures. That was it. You want? Oh, you want? Uh, uh, last one. Uh, yeah. Proverb twenty-three, verse twenty-three. Mm-hmm. So then again, now you know you're finding the truth. The Most High is waking you up to know who you are. You know, like our forefather Moses, he gave up his high status mm-hmm. in Egypt for the for the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can repent. The so-called Jews cannot repent because they're bastard son. Mm-hmm. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 23. By the truth. The scripture says, by the truth. Now you know the truth, read. And sell it not. And don't give it up for mm-hmm. that extra money you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Let them have Let them have his show. But because the kingdom of heaven is yours. So the scripture says, by the truth, read. Also wisdom and instruction. Uh huh. And what? Also wisdom and instruction. And these are the instructions that you hear from the leadership of IUIC, um, instructing you what to do for you, for you to get the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So follow these instructions, read. And understanding. And understanding. And we're bringing out the proper understanding of who we are. So you don't need to sit down with a 90-year-old bastard to have him uh, give you more indoctrination for for some money, bro. Just repent and, and uh, come and get the kingdom. You'll be all right. Right. Well, whatever, you, whatever that God said to you at that table, man, just take that thing and listen to it and throw that thing in the garbage. Just spit it out your mind. It's garbage. It's nonsense. There's no reason to have any man come to you and tell you who or who, what you are not. They did right. not tell you at any point in time that you were wrong. That they called you an anti-Semite. And that was it. They had to do a tantrum. White man always, for a man that claims to be a descendant of David and, and the Maccabees, they are real sissies, man. They're real girly. Well, you, you're anti Semitic. Uh, they, they, they're real, like, real, real weak. Like a bunch of chumps almost. Uh, if, you're not, if you're a Jew, prove it. If we're not the Jews, then prove it. We have the true Hebrews, then prove it. Back, we backing it up. I'm using the Bible and your books. Right. What is your rebuttal? What is your response? So I don't understand. So don't let anyone tell you what you are not unless they can prove that you're not. Don't let say, oh, anti-Semitism. That's trigger words. Give me 2 Maccabees. I mean, 2 Ezra 16, verse 76. 2 Ezra 16, verse 76. Regarding, if, you, if there's any, any one of you celebrities out there who are watching or, or um, been asked to watch this video, who, who, are, who feel you're in too deep in terms of things you may have done, Behind Hollywood doors, that's between you and the Lord. You gotta repent of it and keep it moving. Read this. The book of Second Edges, chapter 16, verse 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. And be verse 75. 75? Yes. Verse 75. Be ye not afraid. The Bible says, be ye not afraid. Go ahead. Neither doubt. Don't have any doubts in your mind that you are the children of Israel. You are the children of Israel. Go ahead. That's right. 
For God is your God. God is your God. Go ahead. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. And the guide of them that keep my commandments. Go ahead. And precepts. And Say, precepts. Go ahead. Saith the Lord God. So he's your God when you're keeping the commandments and hold, holding his precepts. When you're not, he's not your God. The devil is. Go ahead. Let not your sins weigh you down. Don't let your sins that you've been involved in or are involved in or were involved in weigh you down to the point you feel, you know what, I can't pay from that, man. It's impossible. That's not true. That's what Christ said earlier in Matthew 12. That's what the quad just brought out. Go ahead. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Don't let your iniquities overcome you. When you feel you can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. That's right. There's ways out. You well, you're well off. You're well enough. From what, I, from what I've read, you damn near worth, what, 60 mil? You could do a lot with 60 mil. True. A lot. Without any type of television. So Dave Chappelle walked away from it. He was good outside of him. Now, he came back to it. But that just show I'm using him as an example in terms of walking away. You understand? So, again, y'all have to, um, trip this, trip this tell you, count the cost. You got to count the cost, and you got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. All right? Captain Jerome, you good? Yeah, one last scripture. All right. Matthew 16, I believe, 26, verse 25. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So you guys trying to save your life in the entertainment world, in the sports world, if you try to save your career, try to save your life, even though you're well off, you're going to lose it. So is that money worth it being long? Is it worth you rec not receiving the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself a question. Meditate. That's why, like Sadiq said with Dave Chappelle, it was a good thing that he was able to get away. Sometimes you got to walk away, get away, and just meditate. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Go. Reflect. Go, reflect. <laughs> reflect. Go to Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, amongst your people, so get away from that type of society, that type of environment. Akon did it. He's doing well. Yeah. Akon, Akon. Yeah. And he's helping his people out. Yeah. And he's making money doing mm -hmm. his own business, mm -hmm. helping his own people. Behind the scenes. Mm hmm. Go on. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Just like Moses gave up all the riches and glory of Egypt, whoever shall lose his life, meaning lose your life with Viacom, with Fox. Mm -hmm. Don't allow these people to hold something over you. Who are they to you? Mm -hmm. The most High says we are gods. What is a god to a rat? Mm -hmm. These guys are rat, and we squish rats when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it says, and who, and we read that last part again. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake. And who shall lose his life for the black Messiah's sake. Never be ashamed of your heritage and your Christ. He's a black man. All of our forefathers were black and, black and brown people. That's so right. don't apologize for nothing. That's don't right. apologize for your history. Because they didn't apologize for them poisoning our communities, right. pushing drugs in our communities, right. infiltrating the rap, the rap industry, and pushing against the rap in our people. And they didn't apologize for being part of the slave trade either. They yeah. financed the slave shit. Financed the slave shit. And ship. involved in the slave trade heavily. They didn't apologize for that. Mm -hmm. City Bank didn't apologize for profit off of the slave trade. Chase. Yeah. None of these people. Chase Bank, um, Bank of America. They didn't apologize they didn't for give, any of that they stuff. They didn't give a, a genuine apology. It was garbage. Yeah, it was we words. Don't, listen, we don't care about your apology. The apology we want is give us everything back from us. It's not an apology until you return the whole world to us, return all of our wealth, return our customs, return our nationalities. So we don't care about your damn apology. Right. Just put some chins and tackle in your head. Yeah, that's an apology. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fulfill these scriptures. That's the apology I want. Yep. Fulfill these Bible verses. Mm -hmm. Read on. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You're gonna get gain immortality. You're gonna, your riches, your sixty million dollar is nothing but paper money. That's right. Paper money to Esau is invaluable in comparison to what God, the wealth God has in store for us. Mm -hmm. He says we shall take the wealth of the nations. Mm -hmm. We shall milk the kings and the queens in them. Mm -hmm. Read. For what is a man profited if he if he shall gain the whole world? What is your profit, Nick? What is your profit, Deshaun Jackson? If you shall gain the world, and the world that you're looking to gain is a gain, the world of sports, is the world of entertainment. It's soon to end. And it's soon to end. Think about it. You're gaining, you're, you're, you're trying to keep something which you entertain white people. It's nothing but a slave occupation. You have this dancing with the star. What is that? Um, what's that show that he's keeping a the fox? Ma the mass dancer. The mass dancers. Listen, that's, that, that show, it doesn't profit black people, just entertainment for the dominant society. That's it. Is. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So what we'll profit if you gain the world, meaning the dominant society, right. the white world, Esau, I do mean's kingdom, right. read. And lose his own soul. Is your soul worth 
gain in Esau's world, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So make that choice today. Is it worth? Is your money worth your soul? That's all I got to say. But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's the last of it. Yeah. So, again, you brothers and sisters who are in, in these positions of, in terms of celebrities and so forth, we're not telling you to just go out and just quit your job or whatever. We're not telling you. We're telling you that you have to sit down and reflect and figure out with the money you have now presently, could you do something other than what you're doing now that gives you the, that gives you the freedom to serve God and to help your people? Right. We're not telling you, just, oh, just quit your job and it's evil. No, but there's evil involved in entertainment. We know that. But there's ways, like I said, we mentioned, I mentioned Akon earlier. That brother left out of that. He's in the music industry still, but he's still doing things to help the people. You understand? Help his people. So there's a way you have to sit down and really think and analyze and consider, okay, if I do stay in this industry, can I still help support the truth? And the answer is yes, you can. The Lord is a merciful God. But at the same time, over time, as time progresses, you're going to find yourself battling yourself because now you're going to end up playing two sides. You know, so it's all about serving God and mammon. So over time, you're going to say, okay, well, I can't do that because it's a Sabbath. I can't, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be conflicting. So eventually, you have to make a choice. That's what we're saying to you is eventually, you have to make a choice. Whether you're going to entertain and serve or serve the Lord and, 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 and assist your people. It's one or the other. And, that, and, the, and the choice, again, the choice is always going to be yours. Male or female, brother or sister. And that's the choice we leave you with. But, that's the choice we leave you with. But... I hope those of you who are watching gain understanding of this class. I hope it was edifying. I know I speak fast, but I hope I hope I got through to many of you with the research that was that was um, compiled and gathered. And um, Lord's will, we will have more episodes coming up with more deep more information, more books. And I hope you guys tune in. Shalom. Wait, the game. Oh, thanks. Oh yes, thank you. I want I want to want to give a shout out to the brothers that put this together. Um, the, the IT team, the, decor, the decorative team, mm -hmm. um, sisters that made the breakfast for us this morning. It was excellent. Um, you brothers, you were very, very, very much um, helpful to, to, to us. We appreciate your, your, your hard work. You did it in a short time, a short amount of time as well. We got this whole thing set up here. Yeah, they did. The design, um, brother um, uh, Uriel, Jazz, also and Uriel. sister Pam mm -hmm. put this together, this um, poster here together. Um, it's an Ephraim. Uh, uh, Officer Ephraim, Officer Ephraim, Officer Ephraim did, as well, did, mm -hmm. did the whole decorative scheme, um, theme. Soldier Elijah, Soldier yeah, Elijah, the IT team. You got the IT team. Also Yosef. Yosef. Um, we, just want, we want to thank you, brothers, man. From the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank y'all. And Lord's Road, continue to help us. keep. Um, so, I mean, this is the beginning. This is the beginning stages here. This is the first show. This is the, oh, the pilot, right? They call it the pilot, right? Mm -hmm. The pilot. So Lord's Road will get better and better. I'm gonna bring, we're going to come harder and harder, bring more and more information to y'all. And I hope, I hope that you guys share it, share it, share it. And, and study for yourself, read it for yourselves, check it out, research the stuff I'm bringing out, and you know, it is what it is. All right, so with that, we say shalom, um, and thank you. Hey, don't forget to um, to donate. Yes, yes. Um, don't forget to donate to the Booster Club, um, iuic.fundraiser at israelunite.org. Mm -hmm. Also, like I said, if you want to donate um, to IUIC Philadelphia, you can donate to iuic.newjersey at israelunite.org. IYC.NewJersey at IsraelUnite.org. Make sure you subscribe to our channels, our Philadelphia channel as well, um, our Philadelphia in a Classroom channel, because this is going to go on that channel. Right. Um, also, also, um, also yes. visit the IUIC in the Classroom channel. Mm -hmm. Visit, Israel, visit IsraelUnite.org mm -hmm. for any further information regarding contacting us, um, regarding locations. Mm -hmm. um, Booster Club, you mentioned that already, right? Yep. IUIC.fundraiser at Israel Unite. IUIC uh, events, so the bishop always has um, mm -hmm. Shout Out Tuesdays. He has excellent classes on, uh, on that channel as well. IUIC events on YouTube as well, channel. Um, so just check us out, research us, and Lord's will. Hey, by the way, Nick, we spoke to your father, man, so he knows us. If you're on video, we spoke to your father, so reach out to him. And hope y'all come, hope y'all come by, man, or you know, reach out to us. You know, it's up to you. And Deshaun, same for you, brother. You know, same for y'all. We love y'all. We hope that you brothers repent and if, if, at least check that information out. But do not apologize no more. All right? Nothing to apologize for. All right.